welcome to another series of Paddles Up for the Norwich Union Trophy. You're going to see in this series another remarkable exhibition of skill and courage demonstrated by some of the world's leading paddlers and executed in the most testing circumstances here on the River Trueron at Bala in North Wales. You know, I think one of the great joys about this competition is the camaraderie that exists between paddlers from all over the world. John Gosling is once again my co-commentator. John, we have 13 countries represented, and I think that's the largest ever representation, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. We've got 32 paddlers competing for the trophy, and I'm really pleased that they've all just wanted to come over here again and compete at Paddles Up. Now, sadly for us, there are two absentees this year, Richard Fox, the great Richard Fox, and Miriam Jerusalemi, but not, I think, perhaps sad for them. No, they got married a couple of weeks ago, and they're away on their honeymoon at the moment, so uh, they did want to be here, but uh, I suppose their honeymoon's fairly important to them. Well, let's now go up to the start and have a look at the competitors for the first heat of Paddles Up. Andy Ruspin, younger brother of defending Paddles Up champion Ian, best place Britain in the pre-worlds, ranked second in Britain. Heinz Rottemund from Switzerland, his first Paddles Up, he trains full-time in the United States, former Swiss champion, third in the pre-world championships. Mark Delaney from Scotland, the Scottish champion for the last five years, he's ranked third in Britain and was second in the British Open. David Crosby, the 22-year-old from Mansfield, enjoying his best ever season, selected for Europa Cup and pre-worlds, ranked sixth in Britain. Michael Rice, the 24-year-old Dutchman, he's been the Dutch champion since 1987 and finished fifth in the Europa Cup. A familiar face to paddles up, Melvin Jones, he's one of the favourites for this year's competition. He finished sixth in the World Cup, his present ranking in Britain, fourth. Frank Hutters, the Belgian from Antwerp, he's 27 years of age in his second year of competitive slalom and he's already third in the Belgian Divisional Championship. The Italian champion Pierpaolo Ferrazzi can claim to be the best in the world at the moment. He was the World Cup winner, his first ever paddles up. 21-year-old Andy Raspin, the man given the honour of starting this year's Paddles Up. He's one of the most improved young paddlers of the year, but to John Gosling, I reckon he's going to need it because this is one of the most devious courses surely ever devised. Yeah, as you saw, straight into a limbo, and now there's a red and white 360-degree pole. Now through the green gate downstream, hits the bell and moves on down now. New one here, the chicane gate which they just come zigzag straight through it and now into a really difficult limbo. These limbos get harder as they come down the course. Oh, and he hits that one quite hard indeed. And now another downstream gate. He has another one there where he flies over the top and into that there, the stopper, which is the wave that turns back to itself. Target over to another 360, very demanding indeed. You can just see the power of that to water. He made a disappointing start, but he's uh, coming back now and the... Uh, latter part of the course, of course, is probably even harder, so it's uh, going to take all his skill. He's certainly got that because he was runner-up in the British Open and going very well this season. Yeah, he clipped a gate there, seemed to, and had no problem with the balloons, which is a new thing this year where they have to hit these balloons. Comes down, and now this is really interesting. He has to pick up this little kite and move it, do a zigzag through gates. We'll see what he does. Look, takes the kite. Oh, and he's dropped it! Well, not only is he going to lose five points for that, but of course he'll lose five points, and then again, as he hit that, he'll lose five points for not being able to deposit the kite in the bag, and we'll be spending the rest of the day, I think, looking for that kite just disappeared somewhere down that fast-moving river. Yeah, and he's just got the roll gate to finish, which is really hard, and now sprints to the finish line. Oh, and another five points, so a very, very poor finish for young Andy Raspin. One minute, 35.08, but 25 penalty points. This is a newcomer to Paddles Up, Heinz Rottemund from Switzerland, 24 years of age. He trains full-time in the United States and enjoying one of his best-ever seasons, John Gosling. He was third in the pre-worlds at Tusk. Yeah, the pre-worlds is the event that they run prior to next year's Worlds, and it's sort of a warm-up event, but very important, and he had a tremendous result there, and he's doing very well at the moment. He's come down there, no real problems, hits the bell, comes down to this chicane gate, but as we saw with Andy, the, the problems were down at this lower level down here. The limbo gate now coming down, shouldn't have any real problems, but oh, and then he clips it. Now he's got this green gate here, and now has to backward ferry glide, where he's pushing his boat across the swimming water, over into the stopper, and hits the target there. Oh, and he's stuck in the stopper, he's having problems. 
I think the, the point we must also re repeat to John is that uh, for, for many of these overseas paddlers, this is all a new concept, and uh, the tricks of the trade are not uh, they're not accustomed to doing normally. But of course, they all incorporate the great skills of paddling. That's right. He comes down there with the blues. Oh, and takes those completely off as he <laughs> drops over the fall there. He really made that look very simple, I suppose. Well, we'll have to reconstruct the course after this fellow's been down it, I think, because he's completely demolished at least one of the obstacles, but he's doing very well indeed after that uh, clipping the limbo gate. He's done very well, and he's looking uh, paddling very smoothly, looking most competent. Yeah, it comes down now. He's got to just collect this little kite. He gets that without any problem at all, and he's coming down. He's now doing the zigzag there. Oh, he's clipped a pole. Now he's got to drop this into that net. So he's OK there. He's got two penalties at the moment as he comes down to the 360 and towards the end. Yes, he came undone, I think, at both of the limbos, so he's picked up another penalty point there as he comes into the final obstacle, the roll under the gate. He managed that all right, and he's finished in a time of 1 minute 45.41 with 15 penalty points. This is the Scottish champion, Mark Delaney. He's been champion for the last five years and is having an excellent season, ranked third in Britain, and John, the first of the C1 paddlers. That's right, yeah. Mark's kneeling in his boat, whereas the other guys in the kayaks have been sitting. Mark's kneeling using a single blade, and, uh, as you say, he's having a very good season, and he's coming round now to this, the downstream gate, down to the pole, the bell, and no real problem. It'll be really interesting to see how he handles this bottom half. Normally, the C1s have a bit of problem with the limbos because they're so high out the boat, but he shouldn't have any problems at all with the manoeuvres down on this tricky bit. Oh, and then he hits the limbo. Just as you said, but uh, he certainly seemed to negotiate the the bell and some of those uh, trickier obstacles that we've seen the uh, K1s fail on. He's certainly managed to negotiate well, and there again, he had no problems with that, digging very deep into this strong water here. Yeah, you can see how bubbly the water is, and Barlin's throwing him around a lot in that bit. As he comes down to the balloons, he's just slowing his boat down a bit and totally takes the balloons out there. They're filled with water just to get them a bit wet. Down now to the 360 degree turn, which uh, he's managed now. What can he do with this limbo? He clobbered the first one, no problems with that one, though. No, he's down now, round through this. It'd be interesting to see how these C1s are going to handle taking this little ring. They shouldn't have any problems, because they can hold it in the top hand, but it might just affect his paddling. Well, he took it very slowly, and uh, probably very right to do so, because he was uh, much more important that he managed to get a clean take and he's uh, negotiated that no problem again just oh. having a second look he, he almost missed that but now he wants to make up a little bit of time which he's doing yeah now he's round straight down now towards this roll gate you should see mark should roll really quite quickly here because c1's are pretty oh and he clips the gate as he does it he made an awful mess of that and that really was a disappointment because he finished disappointingly one minute 44.48 and 15 penalty points this is David Crosby, the 22-year-old from Mansfield. He's been paddling competitively for nine years and is enjoying his best ever season. He was selected for Europa Cup and the pre-worlds and finished 11th overall in the Europa Cup. Yeah, he's had a very good season. He's really first full season at full international level and uh, he's performed very well indeed. A lot of experience on the circuit there as he smacks the bell and moves on down. It'd be interesting. I think Dave could, could get a good result here. Well, once again, it's... Uh, no harm, just to repeat, that these paddlers don't have any opportunity. Just clip that, so five penalty points there. Don't have any opportunity of running down this course before. So for those particularly, those newcomers to paddles up, it's a daunting prospect, but uh, he's coping admirably so far. Yeah, hits the target there, and that time in the top left-hand side is Mark Delaney's. He's leading at the moment. I mean, anything can happen at paddles, that we know that, but it's good to see the C1 result up there and these kayaks having to work hard to get it and he takes the balloons out there now and he comes over the fall really vicious water there as he goes to the 360 degree pole across this other limbo drops down into the hole there that it's by and now powers down to this gate David Crosby then ranked uh, sixth in Britain and proceeding very nicely as he hits some pretty turbulent water now this is where great care needs to be taken. No problem with that, though. He did that very quickly indeed. Now the three poles. Oh, he's, he, the water's moving faster there than it looks on the, on the screens, uh, Chris, but no problem there. Gets rid of it now, and he, you can see the grit and determination now. He's having to work very hard, and he's always got this roll gate in the back of his mind. Time's not bad, though. Despite the penalty points, if he can just get this uh, over and under, which he's done well, and now making his way to the finishing line, he finishes in 142.77 and 15 penalty points. 
Michael Rice, the 24-year-old from Holland. He now lives and trains in Germany. And having a marvellous season, he's the reigning Dutch champion, and he was fifth in the Europa Cup. Yeah, the Europa Cup is a two-stage event, so they paddle in Germany and then in Italy. And uh, it's very demanding on the paddlers, but uh, he had a tremendous Europa Cup, and he clumps the bell there, no problem at all. But he moves down now to the chicane gate there, where he just rockets through it. And this is the limbo that they all seem to be having trouble with, Chris. This is causing them tremendous amount of problems, and I may say also for Michael Rice. He's picked up five penalty points there. Moves down now, shoots over the top, and very fast indeed. He did really well there. He's got having problems now. He's got his back of the boat caught in the current. Well, we can just see how strong that current is there, John. The other paddlers have made no problems there at all, but uh, it just shows the strength of the water in that part. Yeah, and it, you must remember, this is the first time they've been on this course. They're not allowed a practice run. They just watch a couple of forerunners go down, and oh, and it takes the balloons there really well. And it's the first time he's been on, so it's, it's pretty demanding on these top paddlers. I reckon there won't be a balloon in the, the whole of North Wales, because they're all managing to get that one all right. And he was excellent with that uh, second limbo. He negotiated that quite beautifully. Yeah, it comes across now. This is... This is where one or two of the paddlers have been having problems. He gets the kite there in his hand, no problem, and now goes through the little zigzag sequence, comes back over, and uh, he's doing very well indeed here, paddling very steadily and keeping it moving. Yes, he's uh, steadied the boat uh, quite beautifully after his earlier mistakes now, and gaining in confidence, that was a tricky manoeuvre which he managed. Now he's coming up to the last obstacle. Oh, he certainly clobbered that, so he's picked up penalty points there. That was disappointing. Finishes in a time of 1 minute 40.71 and 10 penalty points. If anyone knows the form and paddles up, it's this man, Melvin Jones, 26-year-old from Hales Owen in the West Midlands. He's ranked fourth in Britain at the moment, but I think, John, one of your favourites. Yeah, I, I, I was talking to Melvin before the race, and it's pretty cold, but he was he was looking lean and mean, as they say, and uh, he does. He's, he's out to win this. He wants to uh, do, a, do a good paddles up, have a good series, and uh, take away the, uh, the trophy at the end. He's coming down now. Let's see what he does with this limbo. His experience, you saw in the first one, he lets go of his paddle and sort of flies back, and oh, and he's cleared it, tremendous. Brilliantly, well, there's no doubt that that was quite the, the, the cleanest execution of that particular obstacle we've seen, and he certainly is determined, but once again, he's got uh, caught up a little bit there in that uh, fast running water, but he got out of it to very well indeed. He's had a mixed Apache season, but he finished sixth in the World Cup, so he's a very, very dangerous uh, competitor. Oh, yeah, he's coming down now, he's taking the balloons there, no problem at all, and he knows this stretch of water like the back of his hand he's paddling and he trains up here sometimes so he knows what he's doing he's coming to this limber he's positioning his boat all the time he's looking for the next move he's looking exactly what he's doing he's concentrating very hard he's coming over now i know he was concerned about this when we were talking about it before this picking this ring up he was eyeing it up and he could have psyched himself out of it for it not at all he's having a marvelous uh, run and he's paddling with huge amounts of confidence i think he may well have clipped that unless it was uh, just a trick of the light but at the moment he's going extremely well he's deposited that in the in the bag all right so he's now got the 360 degree turn this is a great time and he's going well yeah, and he's clear as far as I know up to now, and he's coming down to the finish, Chris. Really good run. Oh, what a superb run. Well, that'll be hard to beat. 1 minute 38.03 and no penalty points. Now, this should be interesting. Frank Hooters, the 27-year-old from Antwerp in Belgium, only in his second year of competitive slalom, John. Yeah, had problems there straight away with the limbo. It's new to them, you see. If you haven't done paddles up before, you're not used to a limbo. Whilst it's only his second year, he's done very well because he's ranked three in Belgium now. And uh, he's low break out there into the eddy, but now he comes up. He shouldn't have a problem with the gates because he's used to paddling the gates because of slalom. So now he comes down through that downstream gate, no problem at all. The bell, strange again to him, but no problem. And he shouldn't be having any problem with the chicane, but I think we'll be seeing him very weary towards this limbo, which everyone's been having trouble with, except Jones. Well, very wisely, he's made a very cautious start. Now, let's see what he can make of this limbo, because it's been causing problems all over the place. He's certainly taking it very slowly. Ah, he's uh, clipped that about three times, so that's uh, five penalty points he's picked up right away. Yeah, now, and he's coming through that gate, over towards the target, where they have to jump over this ledge and into the stopper there. He's pulling himself out of that way, just dragging him back in, and he's having to turn and come back up towards the target. And unfortunately, the course proved too much for Frank Hooters. He finished in a time of 2 minutes 39.56 with 20 penalty points. This is the man we've all been anxious to see in this country, Pierpaolo Ferrazzi from Italy, the World Cup winner. He can claim to be the very best in the world at the moment, John. What is his particular skill? 
Well, he, he's had a tremendous season. He, he all round strength really. He's dedicated totally. And uh, the World Cup races, it's five races through the season, and uh, he, he just consistency throughout the year. Tremendous performer. But he's coming down now, and he's on new skills here again now. We'll see if he can get this limbo gate. I know he was talking to Melvin Jones before it. Oh, and he cleared it with his body and then clips it with his paddle. It's, uh, it's of course, remembering all the different uh, parts <laughs> that you have attached to you. And the, he managed the body, but in making so much of that, he clipped it with the paddle. Five points, and he's in a little bit of trouble here again, wasting time. It just shows the incredible strength that is required. But he's uh, got himself across now and is uh, back on an even keel. Yeah, now he's down, coming down to the balloons, concentrating. He'll be thinking about it. Oh, and he's missed. Oh, you see, just reactions there. Something completely different again. So he's going to be mad now. But look at him powering up the eddy there, the slack water round and he's got another limbo to do and he should be thinking there, got that no problem and now he's in trouble again, he's got caught in the fast flowing water well, coming it, to reverse ferry glide and clips the gate it just shows that uh, this stretch of the river is no respecter of reputations the best in the world perhaps at the moment, fifth two in the Europa Cup he's been paddling for 15 years uh, so he's an experienced man, but he's having trouble and oh, he's missed the kite as well So another, another five penalty points and he's clipped that so this is turning into a dreadful uh, run for him Because of course he's picked up another five penalty points by not being able to deposit the kite So he's uh, running far behind uh, that leading time set by Melvin Jones as he comes up now to the final very weary very tired He gets uh, round and finishes in a time of 1 minute 47.93, but would you believe it 30? penalty points. So here we are at the halfway stage of the first heat. Melvin Jones, 1 minute 38.03. Michael Rice, 1 minute 50.71. David Crosby, 157.77. Mark Delaney, 159.48. Andy Raspin, 2 minutes 0.08. Heinz Rottemund, 2 minutes 0.41. Pierpaolo Farazzi, 222.93 and Frank Hooters, 259.56. We now join the second half with Andy Raspin, who has Heinz Rotterman's combined time of 3 minutes 7.48 seconds to beat. This is Andy Raspin, probably kicking himself after a disappointing first run. Determined, though, John, to make amends this time. Yeah, does the uh, target no problem at all, and I know he's been looking at this course. Look how fast he was into that breakout. All's not lost. There's two people going through to the final in these heats. So uh, he'll be looking for the second place. I don't think he can get up in the first, but if he has a good run down and keeps it clean, he could be uh, in with a chance. Oh. Very nicely there as he comes down to the limbo, and he's just got to go steady. He can't afford penalties. Oh, yes, he's got it. I thought for one moment he might well have missed the bell, but things going well at the moment for Andy Raskin. Pirouette now. He's got to get the stern of the boat down. And, oh, he's had problems there. He's, no, he's sensible, he was going to waste time and try again, and he's worked out faster to get on down and go through this tunnel. This is a new concept this year. They're making the tunnel look simple, but it's a very hard manoeuvre through there. All they can do is drag the paddle behind them. Another good run from uh, Andy Rasput, and he won't be alone in missing the pirouette, but I think he clobbered the first of those poles. Now sprinting down to the finish, and it's a what? Yes, he's got that up and over, three minutes, uh, 3.02, but ten penalty points. This now is Mark Delaney, the Scottish champion, and the first time we're going to see the C1 paddlers on this course. I wonder what they'll make of it. Yeah, he made that very easy. There's no problem with the targets for Mark. Really fast around that, and it, he'll be moving the boat. The speed of the water is absolutely tremendous here. The, the terrain is really... It's, it's looking fantastic. Now, is this going to be an advantage to the C1 paddlers? He shouldn't have any problems at all here. Look at that. <laughs> no trouble. This is where it could get difficult. The limbos, because they're, they're high out the boat, and now he's got to get the tunnel, but he did that magnificently, and now, can he do that? Oh, yeah, now we should see a really good pirouette off Mark. He's told me there's no problem and he's going to hit the ball. Well, this is certainly anybody's race. Oh, and he's done that without any problem. He was quite right. His confidence paid off there. Now, this is turning out to be a superb run. Now, look, Mark can keep paddling through the tunnel because he's only got a single blade, so he's going to gain on the kayaks here, and he's... It looks as though he could take the time at 3.07 that's in the top left there. Mind you, he's got these uh, gates to manoeuvre now. He's done uh, the first part of it all right. He's coming up now to the end. Now it's up and over. Can he get it? He steadies himself. He's up and over and he's finished in three minutes at 2.85 and no penalty points. So he's in the lead. 
So good news for the C1 paddlers. And David Crosby now, the 22-year-old from Mansfield, knows what he has to beat. Yeah, hits the target, no problem. He's going to be driving. He's really fast into that breakout. Look at the determination on Crosby's face there. Really going. He's now pulling back out. This is where it could slow him down a bit, but he's cut right the way across. That's a really good manoeuvre there by Dave. Passes it through. Now he'll power down and he'll go under these limbos and keep driving if he can as soon as he leaves that one, trying to get towards that bell. Done the bell, that's no problem. Now let's see if he can get the pirouette. Certainly Delaney was brilliant on this move. Oh! And the rest of the course proved difficult for David, who finished with an overall time of 3 minutes 8.4 seconds. Next away is Michael Rice from the Netherlands, age 24. Yeah, comes down here, and, and this is crucial because that's Delaney's time in the top. There's two left in this heat, so he doesn't beat Mark. Mark's through to the final, so he's really going Rice here. Michael knows that if he can beat Delaney, he's, he's into the final, basically, and it's really, really tight, this is. These guys are really turning it on. Well, he lives now and trains in Munich to give him better conditions, so we'll see what it's done for him. Oh, he clipped the limbo just to it. He's lost a little bit of control now, but he recovered well. Yeah, he needs to get this pirouette. He desperately needs this pirouette. He was certainly high enough. Oh, he just couldn't get, get round, but he got the height, not quite the direction. Yeah, he just lost the control on the boat. He just got pulled down straight. Oh, and he's he pulled quite hard into that tunnel now as he approaches. The time's moving on, he's got penalties, so it's going to be very close between him and Delaney here. But he's still got a very good time, but if he can just control this now and get through without trouble, who knows? He's going with both legs, hands, he's got it over just, and finishes in 2 minutes, 52.09, and 10 penalty points. So Michael Rice in by an incredible three quarters of a second in the lead, and that's the time then for Melvin Jones to beat. Well, Melvin had quite a cushion at the start of this, but uh, he can't go too cautiously, and he's not the guy to go cautiously. He's going, he wants to do it clear this half, so he does the full run. No one but Melvin cleared the first half uh, of the course, so now he's coming down, and uh, he'll, be, he'll be looking for a clean run all the way. He but, must be very high on confidence, though, John, after that magnificent run. Yeah, he's, he's a bit cautious on that first one. No problem there. The bell, this is going to be a bit of a problem. No problem at all. Just the pirouette. Can he get the pirouette? He's a very good friend of Delaney's, and if he doesn't get this, Mark will never let him live it down. Oh, so close again. He's again got the elevation, but just couldn't get quite the control on his boat. But he's still got a good time. Yeah, he should be in, but you never know. He's, he's got to beat this time at 3.02 by Rice to, to win the heat and go through to the final. And now Melvin, I mean, he's still got to get the paddles up and so on. He's, he's looking cautious. So coming up to the finish, he gets the paddle up and over and finishes in 2 minutes 37.45 with just five penalty points to win the heat. And these then, the finishing positions in the first heat. Melvin Jones the winner, 2 minutes 42.45. Michael Rice second, 3 minutes 2.09. Mark Delaney, 3 minutes 2.85. Heinz Rottermund, 3 minutes 7.48. David Crosby, 3 minutes 8.47. Andy Raspin, 3.13.02. Pierpaolo Ferrazzi, 3.54.64. And Frank Hutters, 4 minutes 43.50. The winners of the first heat, Michael Rice and Melvin Jones, go through to the final for the Norwich Union Trophy. I hope that you'll join us again for programme two when you can see the defending champion Ian Raspin who's in great form and of course one of the world's best paddlers at the moment from Dublin, Ian Wiley. Welcome back to the River Truellen here at Bala for the second heat in Paddles Up for the Norwich Union Trophy. The winners of the first heat and through to the final were Melvin Jones from Great Britain and the Dutchman Michael Rice. But now for this second heat, we have some formidable competitors, don't we, John? 
We certainly do. We've got Ian Raspin, who is the defending champion, and he's got a tremendous chance. Ian Wiley from Dublin. Well, he's my outside, well, he's my favourite for the event. And you've got Strugel from Yugoslavia, who's come over specially for the event and is determined to do well. Well, we're about to find out. Let's now go up to the start for the runners and riders for this second heat. A seasoned campaigner in paddles up, Russ Smith, the 26-year-old from Barnard Castle, currently ranked seventh in Britain. Renato de Monte from Verona in Italy. Age 30, he first took part in Paddles Up in 1985, a former Italian champion. Pieter Delvaux, the Belgian champion for the third time, also the Belgian cup holder. Marian Strukel, 26-year-old from Yugoslavia, former Yugoslav champion, finished ninth in the World Cup, present ranking in his country is fourth. The man at the very top of his form, 20-year-old Sean Pierce, the new British champion and British Open champion. One of the world's best paddlers at the moment, Ian Wiley from Ireland. Gold medal in the pre-world championships, second in the Europa Cup. Ian Ruspin, the defending Paddles Up champion, ranked third in Britain, fifth in the World Cup final in Tassel. The experienced Frenchman Gilles Clouseau, 17 years a paddler, a silver medal in the World Championships in 1989, his first paddles up. An experienced campaigner to get us started in the second heat, it's 26-year-old Russ Smith, who certainly knows all the tricks of this particular paddles up trade, doesn't he, John? He certainly does, and he comes down under the first limbo gate there, did very well indeed, round the red pole, the 360-degree pole there, comes down now, green gate, downstream gate, just to get him into the right position, hits the bell. So now he's moving down to the next section of the course, which is the chicane gate first, and then down to another limbo, which is even lower than the first. He's had a, an indifferent season so far. Let's see how he copes with this very well indeed, because that uh, caused a lot of problems in the previous heat. Yeah, experienced paddles up paddler there came in, knew what he was doing. Over the, it's the target, no problem at all, spins his boat and comes driving back across that fast-flowing water into the slack eddy there and round another 360-degree pole. This is so far a very good run, but uh, in many ways the hardest obstacles yet to come. We're coming up to the balloons. What's he going to make of them? Oh, he missed with one of them, so that's five penalty points right off. Yeah, now he comes down another 360, breaks out, has to drive back into the flowing water now to come down to the limbo gate. Oh, and he's... He's gone too far, he's got to come back, and he's missed that, so that's another penalty, Chris, as he comes back. And you can see now he's sort of, he's not quite aware where he is now. He's certainly lost his momentum, and he seems to be a little bit disorientated, but he'll have to steady up now as he comes to the coit. Manages to pick that up all right, and of course he then he has to carry it until he deposits it in the net, just coming up for that. Yeah, look, he's concentrating and now drives back over. Very hard, that little zigzag manoeuvre now as he comes down to another 360. And now down to the roll gate, so he's going to get very wet just before the end of the run. Nobody clips that and he shakes his head, finishing in a time of 1 minute 42.75, but he has 15 penalty points. This is Renato De Monte from Verona, age 30. He's no stranger, though, to paddles up. He's been in the... One of the early events in 1985, former Italian champion and John, another of our C1 paddlers. That's right, he's kneeling in the boat. Uh, the, Russ was sitting in his boat using a double blade and he's kneeling in his boat using a single blade and uh, normally you see them, they, they, they're really aggressive, these C1 paddlers. They're so high, they normally have problems with limbo gates. We'll see what's going to happen here as he comes down, but they uh, manoeuvre the boat so much faster. Well, he certainly had trouble with that one. He's picked up five penalty points. There seems to be almost a smile on his face, though. He's certainly enjoying himself as he comes into this most turbulent water and has now to try and uh, hit this target, but he's gone far too far below it. Yeah, we crafty move there, releases his top hand, hits the uh, target, comes across now towards his 360 in the slack water, back out now and driving down towards these balloons, and he'll, he shouldn't have any problem at all with a C1 blade. <laughs> Certainly right, he's demolished that. We can see the balloon flying down uh, stream ahead of him almost, and he's uh, picking up for lost time now. This is uh, coming into quite a fast time. Let's see what he can make of this second limbo. No problem with that. Yeah, and he's coming down through that gate now, comes across, and we'll see how he handles this uh, ring as he takes it off and comes down. He'll probably hold it in his right left hand. Yeah, takes it in his top hand now, so he's now just steadying himself and concentrating. He's got to, he's got to get round these poles and be clear. Oh, and then he hits that one. A silly mistake, really, as he hits the pole. 
drops it into the net there. That's no problem at all for him as he moves down 360. We should see a very fast roll from the C1 paddler as he comes to the roll gate. He'll need that, though. He's got the penalty points uh, in addition to his time. He comes up now to this uh, last of the gates. Oh, he's clipped that too, though. So a poor finish for Renato de Monte. He finishes in a time of 1 minute 49.70 and 20 penalty points. This is Pieter Delvaux, the Belgian champion for the third time, 25 years of age. He's been paddling since the age of six, so John, he's very experienced. Yeah, he'll be an experienced white water paddler, but uh, again, we're here at Paddles Up and the uh, tricks and manoeuvres they have to do are new to them. The gate situations are no problem at all, you can see him there. He's reading the water, he's watching where the fast water's moving and trying to keep in. The bell, no problem, but we've seen in uh, the previous heat as well that it's as they get down to this next limbo and down this bottom bit where they're having the real problems. Well, he was saying that he does most of his training on the Flat River uh, near uh, Brussels, so obviously this is going to be a problem for him. He picked up uh, five penalty points at the first of the limbo, but he's not alone in that, and he can certainly recover if he can uh, just get a decent time now in the very, very tricky stages later on. Yeah, you see the turbulence of the water here, throwing the paddlers around, he's driving across now back to this 360 degree pole here and uh, it comes out of that and I think now go through the mind is these balloons where they're coming down and they've got to throw the paddle off and get them and all he's missed one is take the first one and not got the second and again because it's a, a different thing to what he's used to doing but round that pole drives across now and uh, moves to that limbo no problem at all there powering back in this fast water towards this green gate just to keep them going downstream some trouble there now back coming over to pick up this ring. He's, he's working hard, but it doesn't seem to be moving the boat fast enough. Oh, and he's missed the ring! Well, that's another five then he'll pick up because uh, he's got to deposit it in that uh, net, which he now can't do, and uh, as you say, he's been taking it uh, very steadily. He's not uh, taking any risks, and now he's picking up the penalty points from missing the obstacles, hitting the obstacles. He comes now to the second last. He's round that uh, without any problems, but this is a slow time. He does the roll without any problems too but finishes in a time of 1 minute 49.23 with 20 penalty points. This is Marian Strukul, the 26-year-old from Yugoslavia. He's the former Yugoslav champion. He finished ninth in the World Cup, and he's been in Paddles Up before. He was here in 1987. Yeah, he uh, had a couple of years off from Paddles Up, as it were, and now he's here, and he wants to take this trophy back to Yugoslavia with him. He's coming down now through the gates, no problem at all, hits the bell and moves down to this chicane section and the second limbo, which is the one that's given him all the trouble, Chris. Well, let's see how he negotiates, what his particular technique is. Well, whatever it was, it didn't work because he's picked up five penalty points, but he's not alone in that. Yeah, he seemed to hit that with the back of the paddle as he went underneath, but oh, and he clips the ball beautifully there, gets stuck slightly in the stopper, but now drives back across this fast-flowing water to the 360-degree pole, and he's got to pull out of there now and head down to these balloons and see if he can hit both of them. Causing problems, let's see what he can do here. Oh, well, he missed many both. problems, missed them both. That was unbelievable. I mean, he, he actually did all the right moves and then missed them completely. Comes down now to the limbo, under this one. They're lower as they come down the course, so it's really quite difficult for them. He's lost his way a bit now, but oh, and he clips that gate. He's in all sorts of problems here. This is turning into a, a very difficult run for him now. He'll have to remain clean, and the hardest part in many ways is still to come. Here's this uh, coit, which many have been missing. He has puts it in his mouth just to make absolutely sure that he doesn't lose control of it. Now, what can he do with the gates? Yeah, through the zigzag section there, no problem at all. Just deposits that into the net. Oh, and <laughs> almost takes his head off. Concentration now as he drives over to the 360. They really don't like the roll gate to finish, but he's got to do that now and get a move on. Yes, coming in as quickly as he possibly can. He manages to get around that and finishes in a time of 1 minute 40.96 with 20 penalty points. Now, here's the young man of the moment, 20-year-old Sean Pierce. He's the British champion and British Open champion, having a superb season. Yeah, he's taken international scalps and British scalps this year. He's been really paddling well, and I know he wants to do well here. He drives up there, coming down. You look at the determination on his face as he comes down. Through that downstream green gate, hits the bell, moves down to the chicane. He'll have the limbos in his mind as he approaches this chicane gate and accelerates through it and then comes down towards the limbo. Well, he shares a flat with the Rasmus. He's picked up another five penalty points there, so no doubt tremendous rivalry exists between these uh, three young paddlers, the best uh, around in the country at the moment. Yeah, clips that very nicely, does the turn it. I mean, I know he intended to do that because he said he was going to try and hit it on the way down and do a turn. 
comes back over now, a bit low there, he won't be happy, but he's taking it very cautiously. He's trying to do a steady run and keep it as clean as possible, I think. In many cases, though, that's uh, one of the worst things you can do, is to approach this uh, rather too cautiously. It needs to be done aggressively, doesn't it? That's right, we've seen it happen in the past where they, they, they ease off just a bit too much and they lose the weight. Oh, and he almost lost the back of his boat there. Skill came and experience came in there as he pulled his boat back. He's keeping it steady, he's trying to keep it steady and keep the boat moving at all times as he comes down there to get this kite and then... Oh, and he's missed it! Oh, well, this is uh, a very poor run now for him. It's a very disappointing for him. He doesn't look at all relaxed. He's very nervous, as you say, John. And, of course, he can't now deposit the kite in the net, so he's lost another five points there, and he now approaches the final uh, two obstacles. But a poor, poor run, this, for young Sean Pierce, who wanted to do so well. He's managed to do that all right, but he finishes in a time of 1 minute 39.09 and 30 penalty points. Another man enjoying a wonderful season, Ian Wiley from Ireland, first in the pre-world and second in the Europa Cup. What's going to stop him now, John? Well, I, he's my favourite for this event, to be honest, and uh, he's coming down and he's so determined and he really, really wants to win. He's down through those, no problem at all, hits the bell. He's got to do this chicane where we saw Sean pick up a penalty on it. Now, what Ian is going to do is round that, no problem at all. Can he clear the limbo? Well... Let's see, oh, he did that beautifully, and not many have done that, so a tremendously encouraging start for Wiley. Yeah, coming down now, working very hard. Oh, and he's, oh, he's made a mistake there. He really needed to hit that board on the, on the downward stroke. So he's come back up now, he's hit it, he's coming over. So he's clear up to now, so he's doing really well as he comes down now to this 360 degree. Yes, he can perhaps just afford those a few seconds, provided he remains uh, clean on the way down. Now he comes up to the balloons, which have been causing problems, and he's missed one of them. Real problem there, he, he, he just seemed to be going too fast for it, now he's down round anyway, moving down the course, he's got a penalty, he's got this limbo to negotiate under there, no problem at all, he should be now driving down, he's trying to go across the top of the rock, that's a risky move now as he does that, and he's got to pick up this ring and take it down through the zigzag section. But he's done that well, oh, and he's missed that, and he had it there, at his fingertips, how frustrating, he lost that, so that's another five gone. Yeah, it comes down. Now he's, he can ignore the net, he hasn't got to deposit the ring, he comes down to the 360. But, I mean, remember, two go through from the heat, so he's, he's got to keep going, because anything can happen at this. Well, he can't afford a mistake here, he manages that all right, finishes in a time of 1 minute 39.54, but 15 penalty points. Well, I wonder what this man's going to make of those last two runs ahead of him. Ian Ruspin, the defending champion. The mistakes have been made. The field is absolutely wide open. It certainly is, and Ian comes down. I know he's nervous about this. He was saying after last year's event, he got on a buzz in Notting where he lives, and someone came up and said, you're Ian Ruspin, who won paddles up. And he couldn't believe it, and I know he wants to win again. He's desperate to win this event. He hasn't had his best season, but he's... He's going well and he's very powerful as he comes down to this. No one knows his course better than Raspin. He's been walking it and stalking it. Oh, and he picks up a five. How many times have we seen that? And it just seemed that he was uh, he'd managed to negotiate it quite successfully and at the last moment he just clipped it, but he's managed to get that board very well. He saved quite a few seconds there. Certainly did, and he's powering over now. This heat is so wide open. Penalties seem to be coming fast and fast and clean, all the way down, fast and clean, understatement. But now here we go down, he's got the blues, can he get... Oh, and he takes both the blues out there without any effort at all, down to the 360-degree pole. Ian now looking determined and mean. He comes down to the limbo, positions the boat ready for the next gate. See how fast he was there, Chris? He, he's now through that one, he's going down below the rock, coming across, he's got to get this uh, ring off this pole, he can't afford to miss this. Well, he's managed that, and he's probably quite uh, aware now that uh, he's got a little bit of time. He's has a good run, he's not making any mistakes, and if he can keep it this way, he's going to have a good time. Oh, he couldn't get it in to the net. Well, we haven't seen that before. We've seen them uh, miss, miss the coin altogether, but he then missed the net. My goodness, but he's managed to get round there 360 degrees. Now he's coming up to the last obstacle. Oh, he's clipped that as well, so a disappointing finish. 1 minute 41.16 and 15 penalty points. Well, I wonder if there's a chance of a clear round, the first one from this man, the Frenchman Gilles Clouseau from Angoulême in southern France. He finished second in the World Championships in the United States in 1989. Yeah, he had a very good season that year. Not quite so good this year, but uh, he's come here looking keen to uh, take the Paddles Up trophy and uh, 
clonks the bell with no problem at all now. Moves down to the chicane gate, which is inherited from the French. That was one of their ideas for this course. And uh, down to the second limbo and clears that. It, it's a good run, this, Chris. Now, that was very interesting because he went head first through that and uh, a lot have been leaning back. Where is he? Come back, Gilles. Here he comes. He's uh, got a little bit uh, lost there and lost quite a few seconds, but certainly it's an encouraging start. Yeah, well, he missed the gate completely. I think he was so impressed with himself getting the limbo gate, Chris. But now he's, he's hit that target, so he's still clear. He comes across this 360, and this is going to be something new to him, this balloons. I mean, it's new to everyone who paddles up this year, so he's coming down now, he's concentrating, he's got to hit the balloons. Oh, and he gets one out of two, so he's picked up a penalty. I think one of the problems is just trying to, to, to be uh, too gingerly with those uh, balloons. I think you've just really got to try and hit them as hard as you possibly can. He's under the second limbo, all right, he almost disappears from view, but back he comes, and it's still a very respectable run. Yeah, he, he goes through that now, he's got to come across now and get this little ring. He's, he's taking his time, you can see it there. He's, he's slowing up for it, gets it, puts it in his mouth. So that's one way of carrying it down. He's through the zigzag sequence now, coming down. He's got to put it in the net, he can't make a mistake here. He does that very nicely indeed as he moves over towards the uh, 360 and the roll gate. Now, can he just remain clear in those two? If he can, this is going to be good, although time is slipping away now. Under he goes, oh, he's got that, so there's penalty points there. And he finishes in a time of 1 minute 48.74 with 15 penalty points. So the halfway positions in this second heat. Ian Wiley in the lead, 1 minute 54.54. Ian Raspin, 156.16. Russ Smith, 157.75. Marjan Struckel, 2 minutes 96. Gilles Clouseau, 2 minutes 3.74. Sean Pierce, 2 minutes 9.09. .09. Peter Delvaux, 2 minutes 9.23. And Renato De Monte, 2 minutes 9.70. We now go to the start of the second half, where Gilles Clouseau has Peter Delvaux's combined time of 3 minutes 21.95 to beat. Next away is the Frenchman Gilles Clouseau. Yeah, this, this heat is actually wide open for any of these top paddlers to take it, and uh, Clouseau coming down, the time to beat there, 3.21.95, he's already round the first part of the figure of eight, over to the second very quickly indeed, and... Oh, he's got a bit lost into the eddy there, the slack water, but he's, he's now moving around, and it's, this is the crucial four, four gates here. And we're in the position where a really fine run from behind the field uh, could certainly threaten those further up, so this is full of encouragement, uh, this start for Gilles Clouseau, if he can just keep it going at this. Did very nicely there, now he's coming across to the pirouette gate. I think it's fairly crucial that he gets this. If he gets it, he's putting the pressure on the guys behind. Oh, and he just misses it! Gilles Clouseau found more problems on the course and finished with a time of 3 minutes 14.45, including 10 penalty points. Well, I wonder if that lapse of concentration from Clouseau could cost him dear. We'll soon find out later on, because here now is Marian Struckel from Yugoslavia. Yeah, Struckel coming down, and he's another paddler who knows. He's just got to keep the power on all the way down this course, and... Uh, if he can keep it clean, he's got a very good chance of going through to the final. We already know the two people through from heat one, and uh, these guys now are coming down. The, the tension is there, you can feel it in the air, Chris. Through there, and now approaching the bell. He's been in paddles up before, so he knows the tricks. Now, he'll certainly know this trick, he'll have seen this before, the uh, pirouette. Let's see what he can make of that. He's giving himself plenty of room. Oh, he tried so hard, but just couldn't get it. How often have we seen that? Yeah, he cut across too tight, that's what they're doing. They're all trying to cut the, cut the corner as tight as possible. He's through the tunnel very quickly indeed. And now he's coming down to these zigzags and he, he won't waste his time here. That's a very good time indeed. Just a little bit of care required here. He must know he's done a very good run. He doesn't forget to put the paddle up and he just gets it over and finishes in a time of three minutes, uh, not point two one, and just five penalty points to take the lead. Now then, John Russ Smith knows that he can't make too many mistakes after that fine run. Well, that's right. I mean, there's only 15 seconds di dividing the whole of this uh, group, so they've all got to go. I mean, the ball is proving to be crucial if they can clear it, but uh, Russ is not hanging around on this top stretch and he's moving his boat. If he can get a, a clean move through the... Uh, passing his paddle through the tyre here, he could see something really fast from Smith. Well, no problems. Now we come to the uh, the two limbos followed by the bell, and that's pretty crucial too. Yo, oh, and he rattled that. That was a little bit of carelessness, I think. He just uh, slightly lost control of uh, his paddle. Now he could make, this up, make up for this, though, at the pirouette, but again, he's failed on that. 
He's moving down fast. He's got 10 penalties, and can't you see it? Look at the speed he's going. He's, he, he's held himself there, controlled the boat so he didn't hit the gate, and now coming down, and uh, Smith's going to have to move. It's a good time. He is going to have to move, and he can't afford another mistake, that's for sure. Time running out for him now, though, as he gets the paddle up and doesn't get it over. Oh, dear. Disappointing finish for Smith. He can hardly believe it. Two minutes, 56.63, but 15 penalty points. Here's a man who's been through it all and last year, of course, won the top prize. Ian Ruspin, the defending champion. Yeah, Ian knows 60 seconds it's going to take him to get down this course. He'd like to do it in about 50, I think. He's round there really fast, cutting across. He's got to keep it clean. He, he, he knows it's difficult to win the heat, but he's desperate to get through to the final. So he's got to keep it clean and he's got to keep just the boat moving all the time. He's done that nicely. He's coming down. You can see a bit of tension on his face there. Under the, oh, he's clipped the first limbo, and he's gone into that slightly wrong, but he's going. He needs to hit this pirouette gate desperately. Well, he'll be one of the few who's managed it. He's going to take his time about it, and again, he's just not given himself enough room. They just can't quite get enough elevation. Coming now to the top. Yeah, well, he's got 10-second penalties to add on already, so he's really got a motor down his last bit, otherwise we're going to see Raspin out. Now, let's see what he can make of this manoeuvre here. So he comes up to the last, he gets the paddle up and over, but he finishes in 2 minutes 55.55 with 10 penalty points. Well, that magnificent time of Marianne Struckel's proving very hard to beat, but can this man do it to John, Ian Wiley? Well, as we know, I tip Wiley as the, the guy to, to beat, really, at this event, and uh, I'm surprised Raspin didn't do a bit better on his run there. He, he, he probably eased off too much trying to get the course clean, but... Uh, well, Ian's, Ian's just got to keep going. Ian Wiley here, he's just got to keep going. He, he, it's there to be taken, really, this, this, this heat, and uh, he seems to have come to a standstill. It, this seems to happen in paddles up. They just seem to, to lose something that uh, they get worried halfway down the course. Well, it's a man at the very top of his form. He's in magnificent form. He's been enjoying his best ever season. So we'll see what uh, he can do with the pirouette. Oh, once again, though, he just doesn't quite get it right, and he misses that five penalty points as he comes now to the tunnel. Yeah, and he can't afford any more penalties. He's going to have to get the paddle over at the finish, otherwise we're going to see Raspin going through. This so is... This, this is the time to beat now, and can he do it? Oh, this is going to be so close. It's going to require such accuracy for him, such concentration. The determination certainly is there as he prepares to get the paddle up and over with plenty to spare. He finishes in two minutes, 58.05, five penalty points to win the heat. So the two who go through to the final for the Norwich Union Trophy, Ian Wiley, three minutes, 3.05, and Marion Struckel, three minutes, 5.21. The other placings, Ian Raspin, three minutes, 5.55, Russ Smith, three minutes, 11.63, Gilles Clouseau, three minutes, 14.45, Pieter Delvaux, three minutes, 21.95, Sean Pierce, 3.26.34, and Renato De Monte, 3.30. 38.60. So the winners of the second heat, the Irishman Ian Wiley and Marian Struckel from Yugoslavia, and they'll join Melvin Jones and Michael Rice in the final for the Norwich Union Trophy. Join us again for programme three. That's the ladies' heat when we'll have the defending champion Joan Jays and the new British champion Lynn Simpson. Once again to Paddles Up. We're here on the River Truellen at Bala in North Wales, where the world's top paddlers are continuing their quest for the Norwich Union Trophy. Today it's the ladies' heat, and in previous heats we've seen the course and the conditions pose all sorts of problems for the paddlers. So, John, how are the ladies going to cope? They're going to have problems, obviously. The pirouette gate in particular always causes difficulty. But the world-class field we have, I think we could see some surprises through from them, and they could be doing better than the men have. Now, who do you fancy to get through? Joan Jay's defending champion, rank outsider last year. She's been training quite hard for this, so I would think she might get through to the final, but my money would be on Elizabeth Mittler from Germany. 
She's an experienced international paddler as well as experienced in paddles up now. Well, let's now check on the paddlers for the ladies' heat. 21-year-old Rachel Fox, the sister of Richard, first paddles up, Great Britain team member for the last three years, third in the British Open. German champion Liz Mickler, her fourth paddles up, enjoying one of her best seasons, second in the World Cup, second in the pre-Worlds. The Welsh champion Maria Francis, silver medal in the Europa Cup, her third paddles up, her ranking in Britain is second. Claire Daniels, age 18, the top junior paddler in Britain, now in the senior team, it's her first paddles up. 19-year-old Lynn Simpson, having a magnificent season, the top British lady, British Open champion, British champion. 16-year-old Irena Pavelkova, she comes from Prague, second in the junior world, her first paddles up. 22-year-old Joan Jays from the Llangoflin Canoe Club, she's the defending paddles up champion, currently ranked fourth in Britain. Anne Boixel of France, former world team champion, fourth in the World Cup, ranked second in France. And first off in this heat is a young lady with a name familiar to Paddles Up viewers and in the canoeing world, Rachel Fox, who immediately picks up five penalty points. She's the sister of Richard, perhaps the greatest ever canoeist produced in this country. Yes, cer certainly is. He's the, uh, really the number one world ranking paddler. He's, he's outstanding and uh, Rachel coming down now has uh, performed adequately in her own right. She's a British team member, she's been to the world, she's been to pre-world, she's very, very experienced now. She's coming down, daunting course this for the ladies, coming down, concentrating on this limbo gate. She'll be, oh, and she just clips the back of it too slow, probably just too slow there. She comes down now to the two downstream gates, the green poles, over the top there, turns the boat, and she'll be, she'll be thinking about this. She's coming back up now, driving through, into the fast water now and cutting across. Now, Rachel goes out with Dave Crosby, who we saw in one of the earlier heats, and uh, Dave's here today helping her and, and telling her what he thinks about the course. We've seen before, of course, John, that you can't afford to treat this course with just too much respect because it'll bite you back. She's lost another five points by only just getting the one balloon, but you can't just afford to give it too much respect. No, you've got to be aggressive all the way down, and you can't ease off. You've got to be going for it all the time. She positioned the boat nicely there. She came through. Very nice approach there. And you've got to remember, she's the first lady down as well. They're not allowed to practice on this course. They watch someone go down it, but they're not allowed to practice. And now she's got to come down and take this little ring off the finger there. She gets that really nicely and now goes through this zigzag sequence. Oh, she clips her gate there, so she's picked up a penalty there. Now she deposits the ring into there. That's clear now, so she's OK there now. And she drives over to a 360, and then they have this daunting roll gate to end. Yes, just lost a little bit of time there, went uh, below a little bit further than she needed, but she's still coming into this last one now. She's uh, done that very well indeed and finished in a time of 1 minute 50.64, but 25 penalty points. And this lady's no stranger to paddles up. It's her fourth, Liz Mickler from Germany, enjoying one of her best ever seasons. She was second in the World Cup and second in the pre-World Champions. And of course, John, she's the reigning German champion. Yeah, Liz has uh, really come on leaps and bounds since the first time we saw her in Paddles Up. And now she's up amongst the top ladies in the world. And uh, she's come here, she, she'll be taking it steady. She's experienced paddler, she's experienced at Paddles Up, these, these gates, manoeuvres. She's used to most of them, except for the new stuff we've introduced this year. And now she comes down towards this limbo, concentrating. She'll be easing off a bit and she's, oh, and just clips it with her chest there as she comes underneath and down to this gate, determination on her face, she'll drive across this fast-blowing water, putting the boat, oh, and she clips a gate there. She's into the stop of the wave that turns back on itself, turns around now and drives back over to the 360-degree pole. So two early mistakes, and uh, there is more difficult stuff to come, as we've seen so often before, but she's a, a confident uh, paddler, and as you say, very much at the peak of her form as she hits only just one of the balloons, so that's another five points gone, and really she must just steady up and make no more mistakes if she can. Yeah, she comes round now to this last of the limbos, who spread them out on the course this year instead of putting a sequence of straight three, and it seems to be causing the paddlers a lot more problems. Oh, and she clips a gate there. She won't be happy at all with this run now, but she'll drive over. She'll keep going because, as we've seen in the uh, previous heats, anything can happen in paddles up. Well, a lot's been happening at this particular obstacle, but that was done well. Now she has the, the gates to manoeuvre through. If she can do that, that's all right. Now she comes in and tries to deposit the 
ring in the net, which she's done, so just uh, two more to go, so the uh, finish is much better than the start, and if she can just do this nicely, then it may well be a respectable time. She's managed the 360-degree turn now, coming into the last of the obstacles. Oh, she's clipped that as well, so she finishes in a time of 1 minute 59.18 with 25 penalty points. Another competitor enjoying an excellent season, Maria Francis, 21-year-old Welsh champion. She's ranked the second in Britain, and it's her third paddles up, so she knows what to expect. She's also a silver medal in the Europa Cup. Uh, she's uh, come terribly unstuck there, John. Oh, she's had a real problem there. She got a boat, she was trying to really cut it tight, and she just got a boat angled wrong and got washed downstream with the water, so she's picked up a penalty, and she will not be happy. She was a uh, silver medalist at the Europa Cup, which is a two-stage event. She really performed while well. I was out there with the team and she had a brilliant race, two races there. And uh, she's come here and she's really determined, but uh, she's not going to be happy at all. Clears the limbo, though, really impressive there. She was well prepared for that. She'd led back well before it. She was saying uh, earlier that she's had a wretched time in her previous battles up, so she's absolutely determined to erase the memory of that. But she's wasting a little bit of time, too, in these uh, manoeuvres because she's not only picking up penalty points, but she's losing valuable seconds. Yeah, she's a very aggressive paddler, though. She she determination came in there she drove the boat through that water she comes out now using the skill she's got she read the water she knows what she's doing she oh she takes the one balloon and misses the other but the way she took her paddle back to hit that was unbelievable she said so it's called putting all your eggs in one basket but she's missed one of the eggs so another five penalty points yeah it comes down now to this next limbo oh and uh, silly there she hit the the, the easiest limbo on the course and she gets a five but she's coming down determined very determined to get this, talking to her before, she looked at it and said, that's no problem. Oh. <laughs> what did she say? Well, I'm afraid it is, and she looks back, and uh, she's lost concentration now, she's lost control, and she's losing points all over the place, but as you've said so often before, it's uh, no point to get in giving up, and she seems to have done that, she didn't even need to go across, she could have saved herself a few seconds, so she seems to have lost the place altogether. And she went on to finish in a time of 159.32 with 25 penalty points. This is the 18-year-old student from ross on Wye, Claire Daniels, silver medalist in the British Junior Championships and a great prospect. Yeah, she's, uh, she was in the senior team for the pre-worlds, the senior pre-worlds, which is a tremendous performance for a girl so young. Coming down, breaking out low, and she'll have been relayed up what the other girls have got, the three girls have gone, and very respectable times for the girls. I mean, uh, Rachel scores up there 215-64, but the other two are 224, so, you know, anything can happen in this. We've seen it before in panels of anything can happen. And but the one thing, as you've often said, we mustn't do, or they mustn't do, is to uh, give up, to lose concentration, or even worse, to lose heart, because there's always a chance. Yeah, and, oh, and she clears that really well, but she's slowed up too much, and now she's missed that other gate, so she's picked up penalties there now. She just slowed up too much for that, that uh, limbo gate there and, and ended up getting washed down in the fast-flowing water. She will not be happy with that, but she'll, she'll keep going clear. Well, she's got a lot of guts and an awful lot of determination. It's finding the right balance between the caution and aggressiveness, isn't it? That's right, yeah. I mean, she, uh, she's experienced. For one so young, she's very, very experienced. The watermanship is really high. Oh, she's got both the blues. That is fantastic. Well, that's, uh, that's tremendous. That's the first time we've seen that from the ladies, and this is uh, very respectable now. Look at the power that she's having to uh, use to get across there. Now she comes to the second of the limbos, underneath that without any problems at all. This is good. She's doing incredibly well here, Chris, for a youngster. Remember, she's a junior paddler in the senior heats because she earned a place there, and now she's coming down to this little ring. They're coming down, she's... Oh, oh, she got it, she's dropped it. She just didn't quite get to close enough, and she's also picked up more penalty points there, but don't lose heart, Claire, you're doing well. And uh, it's all very difficult almost to see that uh, rubber ring, far less uh, from us, far less the paddlers, but uh, she just missed that, how frustrating. She's now round the 360-degree turn, comes into the final obstacle, she turns round, oh, she's just clipped that at the end, so she finishes in a time of 2 minutes, 1.87, and she has a total of 25 penalty points. Now then, what will this young lady make of it? 19-year-old Lynn Simpson, the British Open champion, ranked number one in the country. Yeah, Lynn's had a truly amazing season in Britain. She won the championship from Maria Francis, and uh, she's, she's paddling very, very well indeed, and she 
She's come down now. She's come here to to Bala to, to win this Paddles Up trophy for the ladies and uh, moving down very cleanly indeed. Her coach is with her, telling her what to do, helping her along, and uh, she'll be uh, she'll be hard to beat, I think. One of her coaches, of course, is Father Bill, and she's one of these uh, ladies who leaves nothing to chance. She prepares meticulously. She's picked up uh, five penalty points there, but there's no problem. Uh, she can still keep going well, and uh, there's plenty of time, although she's just gone a little bit too far there, so she'll have to come back, touch that board, which she's done. But uh, she's a... Oh, she's in the stopper there, the wave, that turns back herself and holds the boat and she won't be happy there. She was trying a bit of a crafty manoeuvre and it's ended up throwing her right the way downstream on this far side. So now she's going to have to work hard to get up there and she really needs, if she can get both balloons, I think she's in with a really good chance here. Well, let's see, this has been causing problems. Oh, no problem with that. She gave that a tremendous uh, swipe, knocked both out. So this is good. She has to turn round the 360 degree turn here. Now to the second limbo. She's under that no problem at all. Turns back and looks to think, did I hit it? But uh, moving down now, she goes through that gate. She's coming round to pick up this ring. The girls have been having problems now, so she comes down. She's much, much further over. Oh, and she got it and missed it. Oh, what a shame that was. But anyway, oh, and now she's clipped that gate. They seem that when they miss that ring, they clip these gates. No worry, she knows that she's got no need to go to the net as she moves over to do the 360 and the roll gate. Yes, and uh, time still on her side if she can uh, just keep composed. Round that all right, look at the determination there. She comes in, rolls round, she's negotiated that all right, so she finishes in a time of 1 minute 59.56 and just 20 penalty points. Another junior competing in the senior ranks, Irena Pavelkova, 16-year-old from Czechoslovakia. She was second in the Junior World Championships, and John has her eyes very much on the Barcelona Olympics, a young lady of immense promise. Yeah, incredible. She's got incredible water skills, and uh, she's, she's an up-and-coming star. I mean, I think we'll see a lot of her over the next few years, and... Uh, Oh, and she clips the gate there. She'll be really uh, upset about that because those are the simple pieces of the course, this top arm. Yes, again, that just seemed to be a, a slight lack of concentration. There are so many things, of course, to bear in mind uh, during uh, the, a trip down this hazardous course. Oh, she's hit the limbo too. Uh, again, she was uh, not quite in position or fully prepared for it. And another five points, so the points are mounting up. And indeed they did. She amassed 45 penalty points in a time of 2 minutes 08.84. This is Joan Jays, who, as Joan Cothry, won the event last year. Since then, of course, she became married to Jimmy Jays, who is an old friend of Paddles Up. He's not competing this year, but no doubt, John, he'll be giving her support from the shore. Yeah, certainly will. And Joan, Outside of last year, one, and it just goes to show anything can happen with this Paddles Up series, and uh, she's coming down now. She's been working quite hard at uh, training for this, this event, and uh, she she's took the wire and everything there with the bell, but she's coming down to the chicane, new for this year. She's got a lot of support here. She lives just down the road in Clangothlan, and uh, a lot of support and, and chapters. Oh, and she's clipped the limbo there concentrating on wanting to get across here. No one's gone clear in this ladies' event, so Joe knows that. The results come up the course really fast to them. The coaches have walkie-talkies and relay information up as fast as possible, literally when they're sitting on the start line. So she comes up, hits the target. She'll know what she's got to do to get up there. She's got to beat that Rachel Fox time. Oh, she's in trouble. And the trouble continued, finishing in a time of 2 minutes 30.84 with 20 penalty points. The French lady Anne Boixel enjoying an excellent season. She's ranked a second in France and came fourth in the World Cup. Yeah, she's she's looking quite nervous and tense as she came down there. This is uh, new to her, but the French have been working on uh, paddles up back in France and uh, having their own little mini competitions to uh, train for these events, which is really quite good if you think about it. Hits the bell there, no problem at all, coming down towards the chicane. She's looking good now. She looks a bit more relaxed than she was a few seconds ago. She's now down to this limbo. Can she get this lower limbo? Because they go down in... Oh, brilliantly so. <laughs> well, but she's now got to work. She had a look of, uh, of a great fear almost on her face, but she's uh, doing it remarkably well. This is a very good run. Oh, it's almost by accident she hit that, but she still hit it, and she's uh, lost a little bit of time there. This is extremely good. Although great apprehension appearing on the face of Anne, she's doing very well indeed now, if she can just get back on course. Yeah, she's done that very nicely indeed. She, she 
put the power and the strength on when she needed it. Came across, back into the fast-flowing water as she comes down towards the balloons. Can she get them? Yes, she's got them. She's clear up to now, Chris. This is a really, really impressive run. Oh, it's tremendous. She almost seems uh, surprised by her own success at it, but this is terrific. She's going really steady. Remember, the only person to clear this course up to now has been Melvin Jones. And uh, is there a lady going to do it? She'll really embarrass them. And she's going for the top of the rock. This is a tremendous move. Well, let's not speak too soon, but this really is now. If she can position herself well here and just take her time, she's got plenty of time. Oh, she got it off, but she couldn't collect it. So what a shame. It's not going to be a clear run. The apprehension still shows she's lost another five penalty points there. But this is still a remarkable run by this uh, French lady. She's looking determined as she comes in there. She's a bit low. She's obviously really tired in the mental pressure as well as anything else as she comes round to the roll gate. Look at that face. Thank goodness it's over, she says. And she, although she clipped that, she's finished in a time of 1 minute 59.99, but just 15 penalty points. And that fine run by Anne Boixel puts her into the halfway lead. 2 minutes 14.99. Ahead of Rachel Fox, 2 minutes 15.64. Lynn Simpson, 2 minutes 19.56. Elizabeth Mickler, 224.18. Maria Francis, 224.32. Claire Daniels, 226.87. Joan Jays, 2 minutes 50.84. And Irena Pavelkova, 2 minutes 53.84. We now join the second half for the Norwich Union Trophy with Elizabeth Mickler, who has Maria Francis's combined time of 354.74 to beat. Here's one very determined lady, the reigning German champion, Liz Mickler. She didn't have the best of uh, runs in the first part of the heat, although she is, John, enjoying one of her best ever seasons. Yeah, and she came down and missed the target straight away there, that yellow board, the target. So she's had a slight problem on that uh, first bit of the course, but and now she's having even more, but she's she's a gutsy young lady and she, she won't let that get to her. She's coming down now towards passing a paddle through, makes that look fairly simple now and moves on to the limbos. She's looking pretty good at the moment. Well, she's just clipped the first of the limbos through the second all right. She's now got the uh, bell. She's recently become engaged, of course, to Melvin Jones. He's through to the final. How much she'd like to join him, but she's got a lot of work to do if she's going to do that. Yeah, goes over. Pirouette, always problem for the ladies there, but she moves on down now and she's Gritting her teeth and determination, it's a very, very cold day and the paddlers are feeling it, but she's, uh, she knows if she keeps a, a run going, she's got a chance of getting through to the final here. Tremendous season she's had in the World Cup and in the pre-Worlds. Now, how can she negotiate this uh, final stage? Up to the finishing line, that's all right. Up and over, the paddle goes. She finishes in a time of 3 minutes, 33.36, but there are 15 penalty points. It's all to paddle for, for young Lynn Simpson, the British champion. Yeah, Lynn coming down there, really lucky with that one. But uh, into this right-hand breakout, she's the new British champion and she's really determined. Look at the aggression on her face there, she comes across. I know she's been stalking the course, really just getting so angry with it. Well, we certainly mentioned before that she leaves nothing to chance. She's very careful about her preparation and she certainly went uh, through that manoeuvre very carefully indeed. Oh, she clips, oh, she clipped two of them there. Just, I don't know what it is, she just seemed to lose it completely, but she's going to have to pull out now and really get the stops, really get some aggression into her paddling as she moves down. She's gone high there, so there's a chance with the pirouette. Again, just not the uh, strength to lift the boat up to the ball. But, uh, you know, if she keeps going, she's, uh, her time it looks pretty respectable, and the other times were not all that good, so she can keep going and she can still do it. Yeah, she's got these uh, zigzag gates to finish down the bottom, and she's already got 15 seconds worth of penalties, but uh, she's looking quite good here. Yes, the time's very respectable indeed. Now, can she get the paddle up and over? She does, no problems with that. Finishes in a time of 3 minutes 27.89 and 15 penalty points. So, Lynn Simpson's time, the time to beat, and just uh, two paddlers left. This is Rachel Fox. Did well there, she hit that very well indeed, and... Uh, Rachel's boyfriend, Dave Crosby, was in one of the men's heats, and I know he's back here today to help her. And uh, she's, she's confident she can get into the final. She was saying before she was confident of getting there, but uh, she's got it all to do. Third in the British Open, so she's uh, a young lady who's fully confident.
comes up to the tyre very carefully through that. We've seen the ladies take great care with that, but they haven't made many mistakes. Here have been where the mistakes have been coming. She gets through the first limbo, through the second. Now, what can she do with the bell? This is a very respectable time. This is a very good run. She's done amazingly well there. She's moving across to this pirouette. She'll drive upstream now. You'll see her try and get in the fast-flowing water and duck the back of the boat. Oh, she tried so hard there. And now she's gritting her teeth and going on down the course. She wants to win the heat now, I think. Well, she's got every opportunity of doing it. Uh, she didn't waste any time, certainly through the tunnel. Now to the zigzag gates. They've proved a, a problem in the past. What are they going to do for Rachel Fox? Again, good positioning there on the boat. Yes, she's coming through without any problems. This is a very good time. Oh, she couldn't get it up and over. She finishes, though, at a time of 3 minutes 25.89 and 10 penalty points to take the lead. So, Rachel Fox has set the best time, and this is the only lady who can beat it now, the last away, Anne Boxell from France. She's come down very well there. She's she's gritty lady, and she's driving across here, no problems at all. And it's right back to Mark Delaney. He's the only person who's cleared this course, you know. It, it, it's quite amazing, really. I thought it'd be fairly simple for him to clear it, but uh, she's coming down now. She's got to beat Rachel's time to win the heat, and she's got to beat the time of 3.42.89 of Linz, but does the limbos very well there. But she's in trouble with the bell. Yes, and I think she may well have clipped the top limbo, but uh, her time was extremely good until she just slightly lost control there. She's uh, thought it worthwhile to go back and, and hit the bell, which she's done, but uh, she's certainly clipped the first limbo and now just beginning to lose the pace a little bit, and she can't afford to do that. She came close with the pirouette, but not close enough, so that's another five penalty points. So the time's moving on. She, we know she's got ten penalty points, so... She's moving down to the zigzag, so she's not only aiming for this 3.35, it's 3.42 to stop Lynn going into the final, and it's getting quite close here. It certainly is. She's got to run clear here, and she's got to finish cleanly. She's taking her time, she's getting into position, up goes the paddle, over it goes, and she finishes in a time of 3 minutes, 29.21, and 10 penalty points, so she's into the final. So the two ladies into the final, Rachel Fox in a time of 3 minutes 35.89 and Anne Boixel from France, 3 minutes 39.21. The other placings, Lynn Simpson, 3 minutes 42.89, Elizabeth Mickler, 348.36, Maria Francis, 354.74, Claire Daniels, 4 minutes 5.17, Joan Jays, 4 minutes 17.80 and Irena Pavelkova, 422.9. Well, a paddles up final without a fox would surely be unthinkable. And this year, the family is represented not by Richard, but by his younger sister, Rachel. And she goes into the final along with the French girl, Anne Boixel. Not one of the pre-race favourites, but she certainly merits her position. Alongside the men, Melvin Jones, Michael Rice, Ian Wiley and Marian Struco. In our next programme, it's the turn of the juniors. So join us again then. Welcome back to the River Truellen at Bala in North Wales, the picturesque setting for this year's Paddles Up. In the previous programmes, we've seen supreme craftsmanship from the paddlers in their quest for the Norwich Union Trophy. Today, it's the junior heat, with the top two competitors going through to join the seniors in the final. So, John Gosling, just how strong a field is this? Well, we've got the gold and silver medalists from the Junior World Championships as well as having Peter Francis, who's the top Welsh paddler at junior level, Peter Butley, who's the British top junior paddler. The strength of field is uh, very international and very strong. Is there any chance, though, that they can seriously compete as juniors on a course as difficult and in some cases as treacherous as the ones we've seen with the seniors? It's hard, it's very difficult for them. I wouldn't like to be the ones to tell them they couldn't because they believe they can take the scalps of these top boys, so therefore, Yes, they can, but it's going to be very hard for them because it's a very demanding course, as we've seen. And finally, looking at this junior heat, any chance of a, a young fox coming through? Um, we could see a young fox, but I, I'd put my money on uh, young Peter Francis. I, I think he's the guy who could take the junior heat. 
Well, let's find out. Let's go up to the start and get a check on the paddlers for the junior heat. 17-year-old Peter Francis, the brother of Maria, in the Welsh team squad for the last five years, he's ranked second junior in Britain. 16-year-old Espen Beirud from Norway. He's been paddling since he was 10, Norwegian junior champion since the age of 13. 17-year-old Emma Blair, the leading British girl in the junior worlds in Switzerland, ranked second in Britain. 18-year-old Helen Barnes from Nottingham, a recent convert to the sport and a young lady of high promise. Ulrika Oberg, the 17-year-old economic student from Sweden. She's the Swedish senior champion, her second paddles out. 16-year-old Paul Ratcliffe. He's the British junior champion, sixth in the junior world championships in Switzerland, ranked 11th in the senior division. 18-year-old Peter Buckley, second in the British junior championships and a silver medal in the world junior championship. Alexander Adamek, the 18-year-old from Czechoslovakia and the junior world champion, fourth in the senior division. First off in the junior heat, 17-year-old Peter Francis, an accomplished sportsman, but canoeing is his first love. Very determinedly, he goes into that first gate and succeeds. No problem there. No, Peter coming down very hard. He's the younger brother of Maria Francis, who we saw in the ladies' heat. And uh, Peter's been studying the course. He came to watch the ladies' competition to, to learn as much information as he could from his sister, and he's made no problems there as he comes down. This is what we've seen as the tricky part, the chicane gate here that they go through and this second limbo, it's lower than the first, they get lower as they come down and he clears it brilliantly there, looking very impressive Peter now, determined, he's really going well now Chris. Well setting a tremendous example to some of his uh, seniors and uh, peers but uh, he missed that, he'll recover there though, no problem, he's going back, <laughs> you know what, don't waste your energy Peter, you've got a lot more to do but uh, looking very confident indeed, uh, ranked second in the junior grades in Britain. Yeah, it comes down now. The blues now, we've seen problems here for various people. Oh, oh, he tried hard there and he got the first one and the second one just didn't go. He actually released his paddle to really thump it. Comes up round the 360 now and out at, towards this other limbo. He's gone over a bit too far. He's got to, yes, did that very nicely indeed. He, he allowed his boat, the water to move his boat. He's doing that move and he's trying to go across the top of the rock, which is a really fast move. Comes down now to ring. He's got to take this ring off this hook and move down between them. Oh, and he's got it! That was absolutely superb. This is a quite magnificent run. Oh, he clipped that. What bad luck, but it's still a fantastic time. I don't think we've seen anybody quite so determined in his approach and his aggression round this course. He doesn't fear anything. He's coming round now, 360 degrees, and in to the final obstacle. Look at the determination on his face as he goes round. He's done it, and he's completed that last hurdle successfully, so he finishes in a time of 1 minute 43.68 and just 10 penalty points. Well, things still buzzing after that magnificent run by Peter Francis. Now, what can this man do? It's Espen Beirut from Norway, just 16 years of age. Yeah, very big lad for a 16-year-old, and uh, he could have problems on these limbos, but he made the first one look very easy indeed. Very powerful as he comes up round that 360-degree red and white pole there, down through the gate just to get him going down there. Hits the bell, no problem at all there. Comes down to the chicane, and this limbo is very low. We've seen in the past heats people having problems, and uh, he's got to just steady his boat and, and take it clean. Oh, no, no chance at all. As you say, an extraordinarily high, uh, tall person for his age, 16 years of age. And he's very tall, so very difficult for him to manage that. But this shouldn't be too much problem for him, although he's uh, lost a little bit of time here as well. Yeah, he got stuck in the stopper wave there. He turns back on himself, and he just holds the boat. But very powerful, he... No problem at all in getting across now, and he's coming round, and if he can get these balloons, he's, uh, he's going to be looking pretty good. Well, he clobbered one but missed the other. He's, he's certainly managed to hit them both, but only one uh, broke, so that's what counts, and he's lost five penalty points there. Yeah, so now he's up round. He's got this limbo gate. It shouldn't be too much of a problem to him. Yeah, really, oh, really quick duck there as he went under. Down through that gate, he's gone the slower way. Peter Francis cut across the top on that amazing run he had. He's gone round the bottom and he, he's coming over now to collect this ring, slowing the boat up, he's just getting himself over there. Oh, and he was so close to it, he looks back in disgust that he didn't take that. Once again, though, just not quite the right positioning. I wonder if he didn't also just uh, clip that uh, green gate there, but he's going across now to the uh, last two. He's got a tremendous amount of experience despite his age. He was. Uh, 
been paddling since he was age of 10. So he's coming up now to the final gate. He turns, he rolls. Is he going to appear again? He does, yes, and he finishes in a time eventually of 1 minute 51.86 and 20 penalty points. Now, here's a young lady going places, 17-year-old Emma Player. She came 10th in the Junior World Championships in Switzerland, but she was the leading British lady. Yeah, she had a very good World Championships. She's got a lot of promise. She's, uh, she's an up-and-coming star in her own right, and uh, this, this course is going to be interesting to see how she handles this. It's a very, very tough course, as we've seen with the senior heats, and uh, these junior ladies are going to have the work cut out getting a, a clean run down it, but just achieving. She does that very nicely indeed. Reverse ferry glides where she pushes the boat across the water backwards, trying to save energy. And she'll be she'll be looking for a steady run and as clear as possible. She's not going to burn down this course. She's just going to try and keep it clean. Ranked uh, second junior in Britain, five points there though at the first of the limbo gates. She, she lost it completely there. She lost her gate. She was going so slow for the. <laughs> she hits that without even trying. She was going so slow for the limbo that she, she sort of tried to clear it and she drifted past the gate so she picked up more penalties there. In fact, things didn't get any better for Emma Flair. She finished in a time of 2.46.55 with 30 penalty points. This is 18-year-old Helen Barnes. She took up canoeing just four years ago on an adventure holiday, but this is a young lady with very high ambitions, John. Yeah, she's one of the, the up-and-coming paddlers and uh, someone who's in the sport as much because of this competition. She remembers watching it on Paddles Up as Maria Francis came into canoeing because of Paddles Up, which is, shows the following and the support, and it's great when you've had someone who started canoeing partly because of the, the event, and now she is competing in it. And, oh, she's missed the bell! Well, she's one of the very few to do that. She seemed to be in a reasonable position for it and had started very, very confidently indeed, but uh, that was a great disappointment for her. And she's picked up another five there. She rattled that ball. Yeah, she's now... She's got problems coming across, but she's... Oh, really nicely over the limbo gate. But now she's slowed up too much, so she's, she's having problems over there that she's come across it at the wrong angle. Well, Helen Barnes encountered more problems on the course and finished in a time of 3.23.10 with 40 penalty points. This is Ulrika Oberg, the 17-year-old Swedish senior champion, her second paddles up. Yeah, she's done really well. She's, she's a junior paddler, but she's actually the rank number one in her country at ladies, which is uh, a tremendous performance. And if you remember in the past, we've said that she has the ability to uh, improve and, and come on. Oh, and she clips that gate there. It's like a kiss there. Oh, and I think she just got the bell there, although it didn't clong, she hit the bell, so she's got a five. But uh, she's doing very, very well at senior level paddling now for a junior paddler. And uh, juniors, they're all under 18, and uh, or 18 and under. Oh, and she clips that one. And it is a demanding course, it is hard. We've seen the seniors make many, many mistakes uh, on this series of paddles up. Oh, she's out of control there, she's stuck in the stopper. She's been pulled back in, you see all the problems she was having there, Chris. She was having to try and control the boat, and she was still concentrated on trying to hit the target. So many things to think about, aren't there? She remembers very well her first paddles up last year. She had uh, all sorts of problems, but it hasn't discouraged her from coming back, and that's a good thing. Yeah, talking to her at the uh, dinner last night, she was. Uh, she just had a big smile on her face, sort of saying, what am I doing back here, but I love it. Comes down now to the balloon, she smashed one, missed the other, so another five penalty points there, and again, the speed of that water has taken her well below that 360-degree uh, turn, and you can see again the strength that's required, it just takes a little bit of misjudgment, and you're hopelessly out. She's caught in the, sla in the slack water there, the eddy it's called, but she's, what's happening is she's too close to the bank, so she's in the rocky area. Now she's, the determination, look at her go, I mean, that, that's really gritty paddling for a young girl but she's having problems there. And things became even more difficult for Ulrika Orbeg. She finished in a time of 2 minutes 30.31 and a total of 60 penalty points. Here's a tremendous prospect, Paul Radcliffe, 16 years of age, the British junior champion and ranked 11th in the senior division. Yeah, he's had a very, very good season and he's, he's a, a real potential for the future. Since Richard Fox at this age, we haven't seen anyone who's really coming through as good as this lad. He's, um, he's got the ability and the determination to do very, very well at slalom canoeing. And he must have his sights set on 1996, not 1992, but 1996 Olympics, and uh, a great future. Well, he'll certainly have to go some, and he's uh, 
got off to a, an, a discouraging start because he's got five points there at the first of the limbos. Yeah, in that time in the top left-hand side, the 153.68 is Pete Francis's time, which was a very, very respectable run down his first arm with his paddles, of course. And now he's across there very quickly. So he's got a good running time here, although he's, he's collected a penalty. He's doing very well. What's he going to do with these balloons? Oh, he hit them and didn't burst them, so he's going to be collecting 10 there. So he's going to have to get a move on now as he moves on down this course. Once again, we see that this is no respecter of reputations, this course. He comes to the second of the Limbos, under that all right. Yeah, down through that gate, he's gone below the rock. No one has attempted this Pete Francis move across the top. He's coming down to the ring. It's crucial that he gets this ring. Oh, does it very nicely indeed there. Now into the zigzag. Made that look so easy, but again, some of the apparently easier obstacles, he's uh, picking up the points. Deposits the ring in the net and now goes across to the final two obstacles the 360 degree turn which he manages and makes his way now towards the last the roll gate underneath that oh no he's clipped that to another five penalty points and he finishes in a time disappointing one minute 43.62 and 25 penalty points Here's a young man with an exciting future, 18-year-old Peter Buckley, silver medalist in the Junior World Championships. Yeah, and he's had a very successful season in Britain. At the British Open, we had a slalom sprint, which is a short, snappy event, similar to Paddles Up, and uh, he was second in uh, overall in that, with the seniors as well, and uh, he's come here to Paddles Up really determined to take the prize. He, no problems at the top half here, moving down, look of aggression on his face. He's got to be steady as he comes down to this limbo. But this time of Peter Francis's, this 153, does very nicely there, but it's a hard time to beat. But it's also very encouraging, isn't it, for the juniors that they can compete and uh, in some cases do better than their seniors. <laughs> oh, yeah, and uh, they love nothing more than beating the seniors, taking the scalp of top paddlers. And he's coming across now, he's working hard, very aggressive, Coming up round that 360, he's got the blues to come to now. These have been causing problems. He just needs to concentrate and get these two blues. Well, he's got one of them, so that's uh, five penalty points he's lost. Yeah, but uh, he's still going well. He's just got to keep the boat moving. He's got to be aggressive. He's looking confident as he comes down. The waterman of him is very good. Angles the boat right. He's, he's approaching this one now. He's definitely going to go below the rock because that's the way he's angled. And... Uh, He'll be thinking of this ring and thinking, I've got to get that because this is going to help me win the event. Closing stages, though, fraught with difficulties, and here's one of the most difficult of all. Oh, he's done that very well. He looked very uh, confident as he approached that, didn't he? Look at him now, he's working, he's thought about this. They, they go mental preparation, they work all out what they're going to do, and he's doing very well indeed, and he's really very close to Francis's time there. So it's all up now to the last two obstacles. He's round the 360-degree turn, and so to the final obstacle, and he's negotiated that, so he finishes in a time of 1 minute 46.22, just five penalty points, and he's in the lead. A very determined young man, this, and one with a huge reputation, 18-year-old Alexander Adamek from Czechoslovakia, the draining junior world champion. Yeah, he took the goal from uh, Peter, out in Switzerland and uh, had a very, very good World Championships and uh, he's come over to Paddles Up. It's going to be strange to him because he's doing obstacles he's not used to, but he's looking... Oh, I was just going to say looking good as he misses the bell. Probably going a bit too fast there, but he'll keep going. He's, he's looking very aggressive as he comes down. Very, very aggressive indeed, almost reckless. And of course, there's a danger to that. He picked up another five penalty points at the limbo. I suppose obstacles all very strange to him. Well, that's right, yeah, they, they come down and uh, all he... He did that exactly how we wanted, straight over the top, the power and the strength in his stroke there to turn his boat, hits that no problem at all and very aggressive, puts his boat straight into the fast-flowing water there and one big heave gets over. And this is going to be strange to him again now as he comes down to the balloons, something he's not experienced before. Oh, he's missed both, so that's uh, ten penalty points accumulated there. But very fast there, he flipped the back end up as he came over, so he's around very quickly and he's down now and he's thinking of the limbo, he's just turning his boat very nicely indeed. The waterman ship there angles the boat correctly to come down to the gate now, going round the back of the rock. We've seen no one but Peter Francis do that front bit. He certainly but, fears nothing, and this is a very fast time, despite the penalty points he's accruing. Oh, he missed that, though. You can see the look. He still managed to smile. He must have uh, felt tremendous frustration at being so close to that. Yeah, well, that's the whole thing. I mean, if they come and enjoy themselves, that's what Paddle's up's about, not just the winning. And you can see on his face, he's probably still thinking of just missing that ring there. 
Terrific strength he's shown, though, and obvious promise there, despite his disappointments in this run. He finishes with a time of 1 minute 46.27, but there are 30 penalty points. So this is the position at the halfway stage of the junior heats, and after that incredible run, Peter Buckley in the lead, 1 minute 51.22. Peter Francis, 1 minute 53.68. Paul Radcliffe, 2 minutes 8.62. Espen Beirud, 2.11.86. Alexander Adamek, 2.16.27. Emma Player, 2.46.55. Helen Barnes, 3.23.10. And Ulrika Oberg, 3.30.31. The course unfortunately proved too demanding for the three junior girls. The best time, 4 minutes 15.11, put up by Emma Player. And that's the time for this man to beat Alexander Adamek from Czechoslovakia. Made simple of the uh, target at the top there. Now he's into the figure eight and he clips that red pole. So he's uh, picked up a penalty already through that figure of eight. Now he's down to passing his paddles through the tyre. Does that very nicely indeed. And now moves down to the limbo gates. The junior world champion hit the first of the limbo gates, but he certainly attacks the course. We saw that in the first part of the heat. He's not frightened of anything, totally fearless, a little bit reckless of anything. Oh, he came close to that, but uh, it wasn't to be, so another five penalty points gone, but he's racing down this course. Yeah, and he's having trouble with his crash on, because that's what he hit the limbo gate with, and he almost pulled off his head, and that's what he's trying to do, pull it back. It's obviously annoying him in some way, and uh, anyway, he's into the zigzagger at the bottom, and uh, almost at the finish now. It's a tremendously fast time, it's, it's Seems no time since he began. Up and over, there was no doubt about that. He finishes in a time of 3 minutes 12.30 and 15 penalty points. So, Adamex time the target for this man, Espen Berud from Norway, is just 16 years of age. Yes, he's already making hard work of it, though, but he comes down now. The right-hand breakout very aggressively across the course, looking very uh, mean there. And he's, he's got drifted down. He's been pushed down onto these rocks, so he's having a bit of a problem but now he's driving back across into this fast-flowing water, down to where the tyre is. Oh, and he's in trouble! Oh, he's missed it, the look of depression on his face. Well, he just must concentrate, though, again. He's uh, clipped the second of the limbos, now it's the bell, he gets that. Now he's got to concentrate all his efforts to get across uh, for this limbo. We're still desperately trying to see if one of the juniors can get up there, but oh, a lovely header, but no goal, you've lost five penalties. Yeah, that's it, coming on down now to the tunnel. And uh, he's, he's, oh, he's, he tried paddling through it completely, <laughs> almost lost his paddles. <laughs> completely disorientated, I think no one told him that you can't paddle through that. And uh, he, he tried to go the whole hog, but anyway, he's lost another five penalty points, but he's still there, and he's at the finish, he throws his paddle over, three minutes, 17.51, and a total of 25 penalty points. So now we're down to the last three, and it's this man, Paul Radcliffe, who had such a marvellous uh, Junior World Championships in Switzerland. Yeah, he's had an excellent season, and uh, he's got to get inside the two uh, Peters, really. And uh, he, he, he's just got to keep the boat moving all the time, not panic, just paddle the course and try his best to do it clear. He really can't afford a penalty, but... He can put the pressure on the other two behind him. We've seen it happen in senior heats. He's clear. Oh! Oh, he's going to be mad. I think he was so pleased to clear the first limbo, he hit the second. It just shows, John, you can't relax your concentration for one second. No, and he's around to this pirouette. He's got the... Oh! He got the boat up and then just misses that pirouette. They're all just giving themselves not just quite enough room to manage to manoeuvre that negotiated, but he came through the uh, tunnel, and now he's up. It's a good time, certainly he's racing on, and he can't afford any mistakes now, and he's got to come down as fast as he possibly can with this and get the paddle up and over. Yes, no problem with that. He finishes in three minutes, 9.55, and just ten penalty points, so he's into the lead. Here's a determined young man, Peter Francis. I'm sure we're going to see and hear a lot more of this young man. He's ranked to second junior in Britain. In the senior grades, he's 40. Yeah, he's had a very good season, and he was at the Junior Worlds, and uh, determination is what he's got. He's going down here now, trying very hard to keep the course clear. Well, certainly that time on the left is well within his compass, but he's coming a little bit unstuck at the tyre, and he's lost five penalty points there, so not a good start for him. No, oh, and he's, he's just cut the two limbo, so he's picked up another ten, but if he keeps going, he'll be all right, and Val at the second attempt. Moving down, though, going quite well, 
But it's amazing how quickly you can uh, get out of your stride, you lose your concentration. Now he comes across, he's going to need all his skill and power here. He's picked up another five penalties there because he's missed the pirouette. Yeah, coming down now towards the tunnel, he's just got to not try and paddle through that. That's well done, Peter. Now he's got to be cool at the bottom here, Chris. He's got the zigzags to go and that time of 3.19.55 to beat to get into the final. Yes, and he can still do it despite his penalties. So the look of uh, pain and anguish on his face. Up goes the paddle, over it goes, and he's finished in 2.58.54. He's annoyed with himself, but he's only got 20 penalty points. He goes into the lead. So the last man off, Peter Buckley, aged 18 from Shrewsbury, and the time of Peter Francis is the time to beat if he wants to win this heat. Yeah, he's come down there, hit the target no problem, into the figure of eight gates, so he's going over. Young Peter there, Peter Francis, came down, didn't look to be going so well at the top, made a lot of mistakes, but still took the lead in this heat. So what's Peter doing? Oh, he's done well there, but he's uh, pulled himself over, so he's still clear on the course. He needs to get these limbos clear. Oh, well, he clipped the second, certainly. I wasn't at all sure he didn't maybe nudge the first as well, but he's uh, got the bell all right. He's now just got to steady himself up, though, because this is where it could all start to go wrong for him. He's got uh, time and he's got penalty points on his side at the moment. Comes up to the pirate. He's given himself a lot of room and, oh, very close. Once again with the head, but uh, that's five penalty points. He certainly came close enough. Now, try to make up time. Yeah, he's got ten penalty points. He's carrying down to this last little sequence. So he's really got to move. He can't afford to hang around, but likewise, he can't afford to go too fast because he can't afford to hit a gate. And it's so tight at the top there, he just can't afford any fraction of a second. No doubt at the end, a good finish. He finishes in two minutes, 58.58, and 10 penalty points, so he wins the heat. So the two juniors through to the final for the Norwich Union Trophy, Peter Buckley, 3 minutes, 8.58 and Peter Francis, 3 minutes, 18.54. The other placings, Paul Radcliffe, 3 minutes, 19.55. Alexander Adamek, 3.27.30. Espen Beirud, 3.42.51. Emma Player, 4.15.11. Ulrika Oberg, 5.21.22. And Helen Barnes, 5.30.76. So after that heat, we now know the finalists for this year's Paddles Up, and a truly international field it is. There's Rachel Fox from Nottingham, Anne Boixel, the number two in France, Melvin Jones from the West Midlands, Michael Rice from Holland, the Dubliner, Ian Wiley, Marion Struckel from Yugoslavia, Peter Francis from Wales, and the young English junior in form, Peter Buckley. So don't forget to join us for the final of Paddles Up for the Norwich Union Trophy. Back to the banks of the River Truellen at Bala in North Wales for the climax of this year's Paddles Up. We've reached the stage when the eight best placed competitors from the heats have battled their way through the severest of tests to reach the final. And this year, the finalists for the Norwich Union Trophy are evenly split between competitors from overseas and those paddlers from Britain. So, John Gosling, how do you see the final going? Well, my money's still on Ian Wiley. He had a really good performance, but uh, Melvin Jones in the heats came through so strongly, he must be in with the chance as well. Well, let's now go straight up to the start and check on the names for the paddlers for this year's final. Anne Boixel from France. She wasn't one of the favourites to reach the final, but produced an impressive performance to finish second in her heat. Rachel Fox, keeping up the family tradition, and in her first paddles up, she was the winner of the ladies' heat. Peter France is the first of our junior paddlers, but fiercely competitive. He'll be out to challenge the seniors. And so will this young man, Peter Buckley, who came through to win the junior heat and so maintain his outstanding form this season. Marian Strukel from Yugoslavia, new to paddles up, but not to top-class competition, quite capable of producing a run to challenge the favourites. 
Ian Wiley is definitely one of the favourites. The Irishman is at the peak of his form and confident of winning paddles up for the first time. Michael Rice, another of our overseas competitors from Holland, benefiting from full-time training in Munich, a real dark horse. Melvin Jones, by far the fastest in the heats with a superb performance and very much the paddler in form. So it's Anne Boixel of France, ranked second in her country, setting off on a course which demands world-class manoeuvres, John. Yeah, she's come down round the 360-degree pole. Now there's a very high target there which she hits, and she now comes across to a downstream green gate, and this is the new thing in here for the final, Chris. Now she's got to break out left, and oh, she's made a mistake, so she's had to go right. Now where she is, she's in real trouble here. This is on the dog leg, we call it, on the Tuerum River. So now she's got to come up the eddy on the left-hand side, and she's got to come across this fast flowing water, she won't be very pleased with herself there. This, I think, John, is the fastest flowing water we've seen on Paddles Up uh, for many years, isn't it? Yeah, we've got a tremendous release, it's a full terrain release. There it goes, there goes the buzzer, now she's got to get across back to where she was, and coming down the chute is a ball. She catched the ball and she's got to hit that yellow target. Now, she's made the decision to paddle up, but some of the paddlers might throw it from there. This is really wasting time for her now. And waste time she did with a combined total of 235.15. What now will Rachel Fox make of this in her first paddles up? Certainly we've seen from Anne Waxell that it's tough going all the way. Yes, yeah, she's coming down now. She's been fairly cautious, really. She's Oh, she's missed the target. You hear the scream from her there. She really underestimated that. Remember, they're not allowed to practice. She's clipped that gate. Now she's much better, much faster than Anne into this manoeuvre here. So now she's got to pull that down. The hooter goes, now she's got to really drive across, Chris, to get to that ball. Yes, uh, tremendous fun uh, to, to watch this. The ball actually beat her into the water, and of course, once it gets into the water, it's devilishly difficult to control. We can see there, look at the speed of it being taken away. Now she's got to work out whether it's worth her time to, to try and negotiate, get the ball, and wh whether she's going to go back upstream and to try and hit the target. I think a good decision there. She had no chance of hitting the target, but she was going to waste so much time. And in fact, she continued to have difficulties and finished in a time of 2 minutes, 48.98. Oh, we've so enjoyed the determination of this young man, Peter Francis, but John, will he be able to attack this course with the same sort of aggressiveness as he showed in the heat? Well, he's certainly looking mean at the moment as he comes down. Oh, and, he, oh, and what a second attempt that could have put him out of line there. For that brilliant recovery there from Peter. Driving round, I know he's so determined to do well. Ah, tremendous agility. He's accomplished a sportsman in many sports, this young man. Uh, so he's got agility and he's uh, certainly got the determination and the courage. He's not quite, though, got the aim. But uh, again, he hasn't wasted a second. He just took the risk that he would drive from a long range, but he hasn't wasted any time. And he's took the kite on a downstream move, so he's really flying down this course. I know Peter really wants to take the men's scalps here coming down he's got caught in the stopper there the way he turned it back on himself he's using that one to help him get through the chicane as he comes round he's carrying the kite in his teeth so it's going to be interesting if he can deposit it well this is a very fast time he had no problems there that's perfect positioning there he didn't have to throw it at all he got close enough to the net just to drop it in but has he missed the bell he certainly missed it on the first now what is he going to do because it's a fast time he's decided just to uh, leave that bell alone and get straight on to the next uh, Next obstacle, which he manages, no, he doesn't, he clipped that as well, so he's uh, lost penalties on the last two obstacles. That's a shame, because this was a marvellous run for time. But unfortunately, things went badly wrong for young Francis further down the course, and he finished in a time of 2 minutes 4.28. This is Peter Buckley, coming to the end of what for him has been a memorable season, and how well he'd like to finish it, John, on a high note. Yeah, he's looking very uh, weary there, and... Uh... I think he's uh, not had a good night's sleep and he's feeling a bit draggy this morning, but uh, he's, he's, he'll, he'll be back into it in a second. He just looks, oh, God, he pulled that down. I think he's back into it now, definitely. He's <laughs> flying across there. Now, let's see what he can do with the ball. The ball dropped into the water, but he's controlled it well. His aim not great, but again, no time wasted. Yeah, but he picked up a five. He hit that red pole there, and that they've been told they're not allowed to touch that target area, otherwise they're going to earth the ball area. Gets the kite, though, now, very nicely on a downstream move, so now he's moving down, he's slowing up a bit. You can see, he just looks a bit weary on his face, and uh, he's been so aggressive. He was so aggressive in the heats, and uh, he's been so aggressive all season. But he's coming round now, he's just steadying himself up. I think he's going for a nice, steady run and trying to keep it as clear as possible. Certainly more tentative uh, than the 
the previous run that uh, we saw from uh, Peter Francis, but he's managed to get the bell, which Francis failed now. How, how could we do in the roll? Oh, again, uh, picked up five penalty points there, and just losing a little bit of control, slightly disorientated. Yeah, he was uh, a bit disorientated, and he came up. I mean, this water is so cold, he's coming down now. It's crucial the angle they get on these limbos to, to get that left-hand break out, the first part of the figure of eight, but he's doing very... Oh, and he just clipped that one, so he's having a bit of a problem now. Coming now to this figure of eight, but he stopped beautifully there. That showed tremendous control, terrific strength and uh, a huge amount of technique. Now then, can he get round there without any problems? Yes, and he finishes in a time of 1 minute 39.48 and just 15 penalty points. This is Marian Strukul, the former Yugoslav champion. He's uh, no stranger to paddles up. He was here in 1987, but John, I fancy he didn't have quite so many of those tricks to get over. No, we've certainly developed paddles up into uh, quite a, a big, exciting event with new obstacles every year, and this one that he's coming up to now is the new one for this year, the really uh, demanding one. He pulls that down really hard. The buzzer goes, now he's got to drive across, and if he's fast enough, he'll be there brilliantly done. Oh, now he's dropped his paddle, so he's having a bit of a problem now and he's touching it, so he's having all sorts of problems. He's going upstream, he's going to throw at the target, and he's the first one to hit the target tremendously well, but he's wasted so much time, he won't be pleased. He's come high now to try and get his kite on a downward move, and you'll see him trying to not stop his boat at all as he approaches it. See, so puts it in his teeth now, he's backward ferry glide. Oh, and his back end gets stuck in the water there. Coming down, having to work very hard indeed, because he's out, he's offline slightly here now, but he's going to drive in, and I think he just hit that gate there as well, so he's picking up penalties as he comes down this course. He's got to try and stay clean, because the guys behind him are going to be pretty fast. And, in fact, he did collect more penalties and finished with a time of 1 minute 51.61 with 25 penalty points. Here's a man who has designs on the trophy, Ian Wiley from Ireland, but he has a very hard time to beat, he can afford no mistakes, his accuracy must be absolutely right, and he's coming now through the gate, he's managed the first two obstacles, no problem at all. Yeah, he's looking pretty confident, actually, as he came down there, he's not trying to go too fast, he's just trying to get it right, and he's pulled that down now, and he should be over before the ball arrives, just on the time it arrives now, and he's just moving up, as he goes up towards the ball, he'll throw this at the target, and... Oh, and what? Oh, he looks really mad with himself there. Uh, well, having steadied himself, having got within range of it to uh, come up with that throw was certainly disappointing. But uh, he's managed to pick up, he's got the coit in his mouth, he's uh, managed to right himself, getting his confidence back. He comes now into this rough water, yeah, round the chicane. Is, this is really, really fast-flowing water there. Sometimes you, you, you get the wrong impression, but he's throwing them around so much, and now he's got to get rid of that there. does that very nicely as he moves over towards the bell. He's got the right angle, he's keeping his boat going downstream, hits the bell, and he's got to power on now down towards this roll gate. This has caused problems. Oh, well, he, he got under it, and did he roll under it? Well, <laughs> we'll have to think what the judges thought. He, he rather did a, lo a limbo in that, John, and then rolled afterwards. Yeah, he was certainly clear on it. We've been told he was definitely clear, but... Uh, he, he's very cautious, it's a good idea actually, but he's clipped that first limbo now and he's, uh, you can see the concentration on his face as he comes down here trying to get these clear. He's looking good there now and he's got to get a tight left-hand breakout, which I would think Wiley will. This is actually a, a marvellous run despite uh, his failure to miss with the target and uh, getting that uh, limbo clip. He's doing extremely well indeed, but the time is going on, he's through the finishing post at 143.87, but he has just 10 penalty points, so he takes the lead. This is the 24-year-old Dutchman, uh, Michael Rice, definitely one of the uh, surprise packages. He wasn't one of the favoured paddlers before the heat started, but he's certainly merited his place in this final. Yeah, the, the first heat proved to be the toughest heat to be in, and he did really well to get in there. Pit Mark Delaney for uh, second place by hundreds of a second, and uh, he's here now to take this title. I know he's very, very confident indeed. He's been doing a bit of warming up and a bit of practising on these manoeuvres. And now, oh, and he did so well there, I thought he'd done it. But now he's moving across, he's coming high again, so I would think he's going to try the downward move for the kite, yes. Wonderfully aggressive, he really is taking this course on, he fears nothing, and uh, of course he knows he's got a very, very hard time to beat, and he's got a man in form right behind him, but we're seeing some magnificent displays of uh, paddling here. Yeah, you saw him lean to just divide the pole there, that's doing very well, and he's setting himself up going a bit fast, but he did very well there, and see him pull the boat there, so he hit the stop away right towards the bell now, 
this is proving to be bigger problems, this roll gate, than we thought, but the water it's in is so fierce. Oh, and he's there. Oh, and he's clipped the roll gate. He won't be pleased at all there as he moves on down. And I'm not awfully sure that he, he did a roll. We've had uh, a lot of problems there, but he's been given the roll, but not the uh, the fact that he clipped it, so that's five penalty points, and he's underneath the first limp, <laughs> beautifully shakes his head. It's the water out of his ears, and the second, he's doing these quite supremely well. Yeah, he's slightly wrong angle there, you see. Look, low breakout, very low breakout, because he was at the wrong angle, but he'll drive it up now. He's got to keep the front end down to go under that pole, and he's doing very well indeed. He is, he doesn't have much time to spare, though. He can't afford another mistake. He's through the finish, he's finished in 138.12 and just 10 penalty points so he's the new leader and that time of Michael Rice is the time for this man the last of Melvin Jones that's the time he has to beat can he do it John well he was uh, brilliant in the heat and now he's going pretty steady he's you can see him popping and panting, but that's concentration on Melvin's face. He'll, he knows this water like the back of his hand, so he shouldn't really have many problems with controlling it on the water. Pulls that down now, a bit of support on the back there. There's a lot of Brits here supporting the British paddlers. Comes down now, he's going to go up. I know he wants to do the course clear. Oh, he's having... Oh, aggression. Jones hits the target, he's clear up to now. Terrific for him. I thought he lost a little bit of uh, time uh, getting across, but in fact he righted that and he was across so quickly once he got into his uh, stride. And he's now picked up the coin, heading now down for the chicane and going very well. Yeah, this is a section that Melvin shouldn't have any real problems with because it's basically slalom style gates, but uh, paddling with a coit in your mouth is a bit more difficult than they would normally on a slalom course. Comes now to the deposit, doing well. Oh, he caught his paddle on that there, so he's slightly out of uh, position here. Guts the bell now. Can he do the, the roll gate clean? Well, this has caused the problems before, but he's done that, has he? Did no. he just clip that? I think he just clipped that, so he likes so many others. Five penalty points there, but going extremely well. Yeah, clearing his head there as he comes down to the limbos. Oh, see Melvin's technique there. He lets go of the paddle, and the others don't re quite realise how he does it. It's tremendous confidence to let go of your paddle on those manoeuvres. Oh, but he's incredibly low there, but look at the speed. He turned that, he angled his boat and shot it round. It's the speed of his recovery on at least three occasions on this run. It's been really quite remarkable. He's coming up now, this is going to be a good time. Oh, he clipped the final hurdle. One minute, 40.11 and ten penalty points. So that marvellous run by Michael Rice proving unbeatable. This is the halfway position. Rice in the lead, 1 minute 48.12 from Melvin Jones, 1 minute 50.11. Ian Wiley, 153.87. Peter Buckley, 154.48. Peter Francis, 2 minutes 4.28. Marion Struckel, 216.61. Anne Boixel, 235.15. And Rachel Fox, 248.98. So now we go straight to the second half where Rachel Fox has already gone down in a combined time of 4 minutes 48.15. And we now join Anne Boixel, who has already got five penalty points. Yeah, she, she leant back there on the boat and she's getting caught on this side of the river, so she's having a few problems now that see the speed and the force of this water throwing them down as she comes down there to pass her paddles through. She does that very well indeed now. She's, She'll put a bit of speed on, but try and keep it as calm as possible as she comes to this reverse tunnel. Well, she looks as if she's got herself very well together, but this is an extremely difficult manoeuvre for K1 paddlers. She's made a bit of a hash of it, but the time is not bad. The paddle goes up, and she finishes in a time of 4 minutes 4.90, plus 10 penalty points, so she is the ladies' champion. This is Marian Struckel from Yugoslavia, but, John, he really is going to have to go some if he's going to catch up with the leaders. Yeah, he has the ability to really turn the speed on down here, but uh, he's, got, he's got his work cut out. He's broke out to come across and try and avoid the stopper, but in doing that, he's collected a five-second penalty, so he won't be pleased there at all. He's going to have to really put the power on as he comes down this flat stretch. And you can see the concentration and aggression on his face as he's coming down towards the pirouette. He'll be looking for a one move here. This is where he's got to make up uh, for his disappointing start. He comes round to this pirouette which has proved so difficult. He got the ball but not with the part of the boat that's required. It was with his back. The question now is whether he's going to waste any more time. He's decided not to quite rightly. And it all ended in disappointment for Strugel. He finished in a time of 4 minutes 2.12.
This is Peter Francis, the first of our juniors. He may struggle to catch the seniors, but I think, John, that pride will dictate that he finishes as top junior. Yeah, he'll certainly be trying to beat Pete Butley, and he comes down very... Oh, and he's got caught in that stopper there. It's pulling him down, so he's losing time. So, Peter, now I think you'll see him burn down this stretch. He'll really be going, and he'll try and do the uh, pirouette on a one-move um, stroke. Well, that'll be interesting. This is, of course, where they can pick up. There he is, driving towards this uh, pirouette. The determination there, you can see, he's such an aggressive young paddler. Now, he's not uh, going to try it uh, head-on, as you thought, but he's not going to try it at all, in fact. Again, it's proving just beyond him. He swipes away at the bell, no problem with that. And, oh, comes down too far. He's got a lot of room, to, a lot of uh, space to make up here. Yeah, he was very low in that, Eddie. He won't be pleased with that, but it was a good idea on the bell that he was going past it and just swung his paddle back. Let's see how aggressive now. Knowing Peter, he's going to really smack these balloons one. There you go and now he's driving off oh and he's caught in the uh, all in the in the fittings there he's having real trouble he'll be really mad with himself when he gets to the finish and mad he really was very nearly demolishing the course in a total time of 339.79 so young peter francis in the lead at the moment but only six seconds separate the last four and this is peter buckley a tremendous young prospect yeah peter coming down he's uh, Oh, and he's clipped a gate there, so he's in trouble already, and he's going to have to motor down. I know he's desperate to beat Peter Francis in this uh, final, and you can see the aggression on his face now. He's burning down this course, the paddle rate moving, really looking angry, and Peter's beat some of these top paddlers before in the competitions this year, so he's... he's oh, and he, oh, he's hit the bottom there, so that's his attempt at that, so he's already moving down to the bell. He's picked up the five on the pirouette, but he's going to go very high, I would think, in here. Yeah, Peter there, very good indeed now as he drives back across to get this downstream gate. Very good time indeed, and he's coming up now to the, the two balloons. Oh, well, no, no doubt about that, and he's managed to get himself into a pretty reasonable position now to get across for the next gate. Yeah, coming down towards the fall. He's got to drive now, he's got to angle the boat, and did that very well indeed, angled the boat just to bring it straight up through the stopper. Comes down, steadies himself. This is a very good run indeed here, Chris. He's coming down just over three minutes running time now. Oh, and he's wasting time. He's approaching the tunnel in a different angle. And uh, just fractions of seconds are what's going to count here. And he is wasting seconds at the moment because he's got to get his boat into position. He's managed to get through that, has he? Yes, he's through without penalty. Seconds are going, he's got the paddle over, he's not very happy with himself, but he's finished in a time of 3 minutes 19.80 and just 10 penalty points, so he goes into the lead. Uh, it's all so tight at the top now, as the next down this course is the Irish money in Wiley. Takes the target there, aggression on his face as he comes down. He's low into that, but very nice. Oh, and he's been held by the stopper. Wiley's going to be furious here now as he pulls through. He should really start burning down this course. There's so little time between these top paddlers. He can't afford to make mistakes, and he'll be trying to keep it as clean as possible. Yes, we're just talking really about one penalty being the difference, separating the uh, top four paddlers. So mistakes have got to be kept to a minimum. Time is of the essence, and what's he going to do with this? He's not alone in finding difficulty with the pirouette, but he's got the pirouette. Although he's wasting a lot of time, he's got into the wrong position, he's backed away there, and that's a lot of time gone. Yeah, he won't be pleased with that, but he's done that now. I mean, he'll want a high breakout here, very good breakout indeed, Darian. One stroke round him, he's high on that cross now, so he'll be coming down and he'll try... He was trying to do a forward move there, missed it slightly, so he's got to take the balloons out. He's not going to be in the right position, he's in all sorts of problems here. And his problems continued. He finished in a time of 3.31.02. So Peter Buckley's the time to beat, and only two men can beat the junior. This is one of them, Melvin Jones. Yeah, Melvin coming down now. Did the target faster than she came, but stuck in the stuff. Oh, and he's hit it now, so he's picked up a five-second penalty. He's looking... He looked back and disgusted at that pole then, as if it was the pole's fault. He's driving down now to this pirouette, and it's crucial that he gets this, Chris. Well, he's got to make up time now. He can't afford any more mistakes, and this is one of the hardest of all obstacles, the pirouette. Oh, he's not going to get it, is he? No, he just missed it. Is he going to waste more time? Yes, he's decided to waste more time, and it was probably to his advantage. He's got the bell, but he can't afford to make any mistakes now. Oh, and now he's, he's caught in that stopper there. Now he's, he's having to drive up. He'll come across. He'll try and do a downstream move here. Keep the back. Oh, excellent move there by... Uh, Melvin, he's taking the blues now, he needs to be moving on, he'll know what time he has to beat, but he needs to be moving on. Well, he's coming in now through the gate and through this very rough water. The next obstacle is the 
is the tyre, which he can probably do very quickly indeed with his expertise. He's managed, but once again, not in the perfect position, so valuable fractions of seconds ticking away. The time's going, he's got those uh, penalty points, remember, as well, and he's not in a good position for this. Oh, is it going beyond him? He's certainly not in position at the moment. Oh, he's done that very well, though. He's got round beautifully. Now, get yourself into position, it's over, he's finished in a time of 3 minutes, 16.97, just five penalty points, so Melvin Jones goes into the lead. This is the surprise package of the uh, competition, the Dutchman Michael Rice, and the only man now who can stop Melvin Jones, and he's made a good start. Yeah, very fast there, what's he going to do on the chicane? Oh, he's got stuck, but he's very quick, and remember, Melvin picked up a penalty there, so he's moving down here, Michael is, and he's clear at the moment, you can see the great determination on his face, good paddling stroke there, good technique as he's coming down, concentrating, he knows he needs to get this pirouette, he'll have been told what Melvin's done, so, oh yes he's done it, this could be really close Chris. This is tremendous so far, what strength he's got, did he miss the bell, I think he may know, he just got the clip we're told, and he's uh, broken out high, that's good, he's got a little bit of uh, time just to catch up there, but he's done that well, straight through, and on now to the balloons. So now, oh, he's got both blues, so he's doing really well indeed. And in good position once more, he's going across to the gate. This is a superb run. Very nice through there. Always oh, caught in the stop, but he's always going to be in trouble here if he doesn't get himself sorted out. He's having to reverse very glide where his boat's angled, and now he's going to pass his paddle through. Does he know which way to go? Now, this no one has cleared this tunnel going this way, Chris, so it's going to be very close indeed. Well, he's keeping his cool. He's managing to... Uh right the boat whenever he has a fault but he certainly hasn't <laughs> got through the sheer frustration he really broke the tunnel he's got the paddle up and over he's finished though in a time of three minutes 11.20 and he has 10 penalty points so he's the winner so by the narrowest of margins just three quarters of a second michael rice is the new paddles up champion in a time of three minutes 21.2 from melba jones 321.97, Peter Buckley, 329.80, Ian Wiley, 331.02, Peter Francis, 339.79, Marion Struckel, 4.2.12, and Wazel, 414.90, the ladies' champion, and Rachel Fox, 448.19. So we come to the conclusion of this year's paddles up. It's certainly the most exciting finish that I can remember, but despite the valiant efforts of the British paddlers, the main prizes went over to the new ladies' champion, Ivan and Bartel. And here to make the presentation is the sponsorship controller of Norwich Union, Andrew Harrell. Yeah! And now to the new paddle champion, also from overseas, Michael Rice from Holland. And so that brings us to an end of this series of Paddles Up from the River Cruellen here at Bala. I hope you'll join us again for the next series.